So of uh, Lander County Commission meeting, uh, Town Board of Battle Mountain and Austin Board of County Highway Commission. Um, Brian, will you lead us in the pledge? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, all right, we're going to go ahead and have a moment of silence. <coughs> All right, so we get started. So, Lambda County Commissioners may break for lunch from 12 p.m. to 1.15. Any agenda item may be taken out of order, may be combined for consideration by the public body, and any items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time. Commissioner reports on meetings, conferences, and seminars attended. So, okay, so um, last week I attended the um, Western Interstate Regional Conference of NACO. Um, it's really interesting. One of the things I've learned about these conferences is a lot of the workshops don't necessarily apply or pertain to Lambda County, but the networking you get to do within the other commissioners and speakers at the conferences is, is totally invaluable. It's lots of really interesting resources. Um, one of the workshops that I did attend, of course this is the Western Region, it was held in Spokane, and a lot of it dealt more um, forest service issues, forestry, et cetera. Et cetera. So, um, one dealt with collaborative uh, forest restoration and improving federal lands through dialogue and action. And even though it was more geared towards the forestry aspect of it, as I looked at it um, from our perspective of how we can collaborate with the BLM and work towards a better, well, we've got a really good relationship with BLM, but possibly working as a collaboration on range management, um, you know, some way to deal with um, the cheat grass issues and whatnot. So um, it was it was a really interesting conference. Um, so that was it. Nothing to report. Thank you. On um, the 13th of May, I did attend the Austin Airport Board um, meeting, and uh, of course we um, were looking at the budget and, and some of the the, um, the extra work we had to do on the fence line and stuff, which which they have been working on. And um, the biggest thing is the fact we're going to lose Frank, which of course is our third member, mm -hmm. and we still um, we we've actually had a quorum and everyone there for a while, so. It, it's been, um, it's going to be a big loss, but we need to go out again and hopefully talk somebody into stepping up with that because it's only a three-person board. On the uh, 20th of May, I attended the Kings Kingston Town Board meeting. Um, they, of course, uh, were looking at everything with their budget, completed that. I had reported before they did have the new fire chief, and uh, he was ratified. That's Chase. And then uh, Jason Bleak, the CEO from Battle Mountain Hospital, came down to talk about the clinic and their plans for that because they've been losing in the neighborhood of uh, $105,000 to $140,000 every year, which they can't afford to keep draining, plus the half a million they had put in, a little over 400000 to actually put the clinic together. So they're looking to see what they can do as alternatives and actually have a business plan so um, that will be something that um, when they finish up what they need, I'm sure to come back to the county for some of our um, recommendations too. <coughs> um, yesterday I attended the um, <coughs> Northeastern Nevada Regional Development Authority meeting in Elko. We're putting together a new interlocal agreement that hasn't been done for some time. Um, that needs to be um, um, certainly updated. Plus we have Humboldt County and the city of Winnemucca that have joined the Northeastern group. So um, everyone has to sign the new inter-local inter, uh, agreements. Um, one of our representatives there was um, <coughs> Joe Lenz from GOED, and he's the mining specialist, and, and it was very enlightening over some of the things that are going on with economic development. Very exciting for the whole North part, and it will all 
eventually trickle down, so I think we're all going to be affected one way or another for good, good things. The um, uh, representative from Barrick was there and uh, talked about their merger and said that they would be laying off people now um, from 60 to 70 people uh, up from now through July, but they are doing all, all kinds of um, uh, interceding meetings with them, trying to find them other jobs too, so um, that was a good thing. Um, the trees in the Austin Cemetery have finally arrived and we are having a planting day tomorrow and hopefully we have lots of volunteers with heavy gloves and good shovels. Road and Bridge uh, was um, very good to us and picked up the trees and all of our fertilizer and such. And uh, the con crews went out doing the weeding, but Road and Bridge actually uh, dug all of our, our tree um, holes for us with their augers, so we should be all set to go. Okay, Art. No, I, I haven't attended any meetings, but one correspondence that I did get was about uh, insect abatement. And I think we need to let people know what's going to happen when this weather clears up. Kathy, can I ask something? You may. <clears throat> so one thing I did forget is it, it, part of the networking, one of the gentlemen that I met, uh, Robert Widener, has a bill before it, to be presented before the uh, legislature in Washington, D.C., and is looking for county support on that. Basically, um, the short of it is the bill would put the burden of proof on the government agencies to prove that roads are not 2477 roads within the counties. As it is now, um, these 2477 roads, um, we have to prove in quiet title, uh, quite a process to make them a 2477 so that we have control of them. And this bill would actually put the burden of the proof on the government agencies. So hopefully that will get enough support, be passed through the legislature in, in D.C. And, and get signed which would be a huge win for, for the Western states especially. All right. Um, I attended the um, water board meetings, and they're all talking about the same thing. There's two, the, two different ones. But the Central um, Nevada uh, Regional Water Authority, the biggest one, um, this AB30, and I'll be trying to be quick, but um, the information that needs to, they wanted passed on. It says on Friday, the Senate Net of Natural Resources Committee voted to move AB 30 to the floor without recommendation. The Central Nevada Regional Water Authority opposes this bill. Under current law, the state engineer must reject an application for water if it opposed, um, proposed or changed the use of water conflicts, existing rights, or protected interest in existing domestic wells. AB 30 authorizes the state engineer to approve an application of water if he determines that the application's monitoring, management, or mitigation plan uh, avoids potential conflict with existing water rights and the rights of domestic well owners. This allows the state um, engineer to consider and approve new applications for water <coughs> rights even if there are non, um, known conflicts. AB 30 does not provide an adequate protection for existing water right owners and does not assure um, all fault conflicts can be avoided. They are saying at this time they believe that this is going to pass and then it will be um, moved on to the Ninth Circuit Court. Um, it's highly contested and they want people to um, chime in um, on this bill. The other um, meetings I went to with the hospital board and the Convention of Tourism <coughs> and everybody's doing their finalizing budget so that's basically what the theme of the meetings are. Um, this time. So that's all I have. All right. So, uh, staff reports on meeting conferences and seminars. So, uh, I did want to remind the commission that the next meeting, June the 13th, is in Austin and it starts at 10 o'clock. So, mark your calendars for that. A little bit on the mosquito bug issues in the county. I've been working real close with Robin Gray. Um, she's done several aerial sprayings of the area and 
she will continue to do that throughout this gestation period to keep the, the, the bugs down. Um, Senate Bill 48, the diesel tax. Um, I went ahead and expressed uh, Lander County support for that. We do want it to come back to the county for the county commissioners to decide on what to do. We don't want the state uh, dictating to the county what they're going to do with, with the diesel tax. So um, once I get a little more on that, uh, I'll let you know. And then, of course, um, the biggest thing is our budget is on your agenda for today. So make sure you have a lot of ink in your pens. Thank you. All right. So public comment for non-agendized items only. Persons are invited to submit um, comments in writing and or attend and make comments on non-agendized items at the board meeting if any, uh, if any. And discussion of those comments are the discretion of the board. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on the public comments based upon the time and the manner of public comment based upon viewpoints may not be restricted. <coughs> My first meeting, so please bear with me. Public comment. I'm sorry. You need to come up here. Sure. And come up here. We got six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to introduce this young man to the community, uh, to the county commissioners. Um, his name is Daniel Litza. Um, he is filling the vacancy for the juvenile probation guardian ad litem in the Lander County office. So I wanted everybody to. Wanted him to have a face of the people that pay our bills and support our juvenile services. And he is here to answer any questions and introduce himself. Uh, I'm Daniel Litzer, like you said. And I'm excited to be back in my home community and just ready to do my best to make a positive difference with the troubled youth. Awesome. Good luck, young Very man. Nice. Thank you. Good luck. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for coming back and serving our community. Um, I'm really excited to have Danny. I mean, he's born and raised here. He knows the community. I think he has a good relationship. Um, we're excited to have him. Um, and one other thing is that we plan, I've introduced him to a number of people, most of everybody. I don't think I, he's met Keith or you all. But um, we're sending him to the police academy July 22nd to the Post Academy, Peace Officer Academy, um, and hopefully he can get through that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is Mr. Itza, everybody. So, thank you. Officer Itza. <laughs> Not yet. Didn't you live down the street from me? Didn't you live down the street from me? Mountain Street? Didn't you live on Mountain yeah. Third? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank Next you. Question. Thank you. Any other public comment? <coughs> All right, consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and may be acted upon by the Board of County Commissioners with one action without extensive discussion. Any members of the board or any citizen may request that an item be taken from the consent agenda discussed and acted upon separately during the meeting. Consent agenda material are available at the Lander County Clerk's Office for viewing and copies are available for a nominal fee. So, um, first one is approval of May 23rd, uh, 2019 agenda notice. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any? Aye. If you want to read them all down. Okay, go down all of them? Yeah. All right, so. Approval of March 14th, 2019, meeting minutes. Approval of March 18th through 19th, special meeting budget workshop. Approval of March 28th, 2019, meeting minutes. Approval of April 1st, special meeting budget workshop. Approval of April 11th, 2019, meeting minutes. Approval of uh, April 25th, 2019, meeting minutes. Approval of May 9th, 2019 meeting minutes. Approval of payment of bills. So we're going to pull the, because we don't have the meeting minutes um, for March 14th, March 28th. March 19th. Oh, March 19th. Mm -hmm. 
All right. April 1st, April 11th, April 25th, May 9th. Then we're going to pull out of the payment of bills, check number 203162 and vote separately. Check number 203006 and vote separately on that. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, March 18th meeting minutes. Second. And I'll payment of the bills excluding the two checks mentioned. Okay, I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? All right. So then we're going to um, approve the payment of check number 203162. I'll, I'll make a motion. motion. I'll, I'll make a motion we approve 203162. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? All right. Colonel Stain, that check is made to my employer. All right. I'll make a motion we approve 203006. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll abstain. Uh, I'm voting aye. Pardon me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what he said. What? I'm sorry. I, 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 we didn't hear what you said. Well, I voted aye. Okay, oh. very good. Sorry. I said that twice. <laughs> All right, we're going to um, take. Number seven out of order to move it to number one. 17. 17. Excuse me, sorry about that. Commissioner, Mancho, Commissioner Mancho. Did you vote on approving the rest of the payment of the bills? Yes. 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 Oh, I missed that. I'm, I apologize. Thank no worries. You. So, what was it, 17? Yeah, 17. Okay, it's actually 16. Paloma? No, 17. Right. My name is Jody Moore, and I guess I'm here Jody, today. Jody, yes. just a minute. We haven't oh. read it in yet. Sorry. Sorry. No, you can, you can stay out. That's okay. Okay, so, okay, so okay, it says pres um, presentation of an uh, uh, appropriation plaque for Wilma Santoya for her 50 years of service to the Battle Mountain Cemetery and all other matters properly related, related thereto. So I'm here today to make sure that Ms. Jody. Wilma Yes. yes. So bear with me because I'm... <laughs> Introduce yourself, please, for the record. My name is Jody Moore for the third time. Okay, so I'm here today to make sure that Miss Wilma gets her recognition that she deserves. So I've got a little story to tell because it kind of shares light on Wilma and her service to the community. So last year, Wilma came into my office and she said that she didn't know if she was going to be able to um, do her duty at the cemetery that she usually does. So... I told her I would help and I would look around and I would try to find um, an organization that would go and put um, flowers on the 350 and mark graves of the cemetery. So I made a few calls and I didn't get any luck. It was winter and no one was thinking about spring and what they wanted to do. So if you know Wilma, she's on the ball. She's got a calendar and notes and everything. And so in the spring she was back in my office wanting to know where we were at and what was going to be done. And so. I said, well, give me another week, let me figure something out. So I made a few calls to the county and um, told them the story. And I said, well, let me, let me get with Wilma and get the story straight. So since the 1970s, Wilma has been going to the cemetery and putting a single flower on every single one of the 350 M mark graves. And what she does is she takes an old spool of, of thread and she would put a single flower in there and she would bury it. And in the spring, she would go back, get the spool, take it back home, purchase the flowers herself, put one flower in the spool, go back down and bury it. And she's done this since the 70s. So it was passed down a couple times and finally I got a call from Bert and he said, whatever you need, we're gonna do this, we're gonna get it done. So um, Bert was great, he jumped on it. One day I came into my office and there's the 350 flowers. So I called Wilma and we set up a date to go down to the cemetery because this is her deal and she's still a big part of it. So I hit the orange juice and made a few calls and I head down there with some volunteers and Wilma's already there and she's getting everything set up and she's on the ball. And so anyway, um, there was Shirley Shepard, myself, Darlene Jones, Kathy Craigmile, Wilma and John Reeves. And together we put the 350 <coughs> flowers in the vases on the graves and so I just think that this is a, a huge community benefit that Wilma's done, and she deserves recognition. So I also want to thank Bert, because once Bert got involved, he jumped on it. I mean, it was awesome. Thank you. You 
got it done and it was smooth and easy and without his help it wouldn't have been done. But I, I want to tell everybody that this is Wilma's deal and she still wants to be involved. So, you know, if anyone wants to volunteer in the future, Wilma will be there, I'm positive. She showed us where to go and what to do and, I mean, this, this amount of time and dedication is just, it's just greatly appreciated. And I have grandparents here, so I appreciate it because you made it a better place and nice to visit and it, it, your service was just awesome. So I'm gonna let Bert present it, her award and give it to her since he was so great too. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Thank you. I deserve to be the one to present it to Miss Wilma. And Jody's one to draw this. But Miss Wilma, there will also be a, uh, we have a, a monument coming we're going to set up in there. It's, it's going to be another plaque, a brass plaque with, it, you know, with your name on it. Never in the cemetery. <laughs> that will be permanent. Um, those who work in silence and, and do the things for this community, it's true love for the community. And there can't be enough said for what you've done for everybody. So thank you for letting me present this to you. Thank you very much, Mama, for all your service. Public, any more public comment? All right. All right. Discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove the closure of Altenburg Avenue to host a street dance on the 10th annual car show August 23rd, starting at 6 p.m. and extending to 1 a.m., and all other matters properly related thereto. Good morning. Good morning. Kate Emerson, Bill for the record, on behalf of the Battle Mountain Burner Car Club. Um, August 24th is our 10th annual car show, and on August 23rd, we want to do something extra because we've gone 10 years successfully, so um, we would like to close Altenburg Avenue to have a street dance on August 23rd. I'll make a motion that we approve the closure of Altenburg Avenue August 23rd from 6 p.m. until 1 a.m. for the 10th annual car show. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Public comment? So thank you. <laughs> so, so number two, discussion of possible action on rather to ratify the county manager's direction of taking down the bell tower from the Austin Youth Center for safety reason as all other matters properly related thereto. At the last meeting, um, there was quite a discussion on removing the bell tower for safety reasons. We have that in place to do to. Uh, for the bell tower to be taken down next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, so I just want to be sure we're still on that same path. You have a place to put it? Yeah, we're going to put it at the old, old Road and Bridge Yard in Austin. When you remove it, will it be one piece? That's the plan. Okay. We, we certainly hope so. I mean, there's, okay. there's, there's concerns that the roof might come down, and, but they're going to certainly take uh, every precaution to, to try to remove it safely in, in one piece and Hopefully the building doesn't fall down. Who's doing the demo, Keith? Anna, are you here? Yes. What, who's doing the demo? Or the Mega, removal? Mega trucking. Mega trucking, yes. Uh, Fallon, I believe, right? Wilma. Wilma, okay. I'll make a motion that we ratify the direction to take down the bell tower to our county manager to take down the bell tower from the Austin Youth Center. Public comment? No. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, discussion and possible action of approval, disapproval of dissolution of the Livestock Events um, Center Advisory Board or the um, 
advertisement of the vacant seats to fill the board and all other matters properly related thereto. So currently we do not have the livestock uh, board. The seats have all expired. And I'd just like to know, I know that in the past there's been discussion to dissolve that board, put it back in the county. There's been discussion that, that maybe that the board needs to be revived. And I think Marty Price is here. Uh, yes, uh, he had he had some uh, folks that were interested or actually approved it, or uh, appointed at one time to the board. So I just, uh, I want to see what the board, the commission wants to do with the Livestock Fence Center. I was hoping we really could put this back into effect if enough volunteers would step forward because it was a very viable board and they did a lot actually for that area. So I'd hate to think, I think it would be a loss if we do have to dissolve it. Yeah, I agree with you, Tessa. Well, and I absolutely, and, and I know I've been asking for this for a while because the existing board before the um, their terms were up had not been meeting is they couldn't couldn't get any of the members so I think it's great that if we do actually have people that would like to serve on the board and and keep it active and keep the meetings active and, and be involved okay, Ad, uh, Monty Price for the record Adam McKinney and Clayton Schrader were appointed to the board just less than a year ago so they should still be active members of the board and Deb Piazza I know is very interested in being on the board and well just felt like it's it's something that needs to be addressed and there's it's a great facility over there if we can get put it to use get some activities going on. So I guess I, I'm not even asking to be on the board. I just <laughs> everybody, Come on, Monty. everybody here so these would be the ones two of them are on the board Deb would like to be on the board. So whatever your process for that or recommissioning that board is what we would like to see happen. Keith, what, uh, how many member board is it? I was just looking right now. It's it a is. It's a five member board. Five. five member board. <coughs> so you have a quorum. You have three. And so two, it, two commissioners as, um, as alternate, you know, or, or non-voting, but... Um, I'll make a motion that we try and re revive the Livestock Event Center Advisory Board and authorize our county manager to um, advertise those vacant seats to fill the board. I'll second that. Yeah. In public comment. Gina Rogers, for the record. Do you want to come up pretty please? Things have kind of changed out there at the Livestock Event Center. Uh, I am now appointed over the Livestock Event Center, along with Bert, uh, to make the decisions and stuff that goes on out there. Uh, in the past, I've been on the advisory board for off and on for about 30 years, and it's a good board. And we dealt with the Public Works Department. But now, things have changed. Uh, so where I'm actually over it, with Bert, an advisory board would be okay but they would have to know where their boundary lines are. They need to know what the advisory board um, rules are as far as NRS, um, all of that. And in the past, in the last couple of years or three, um, they overstepped their bounds as far as what their actual job is. And so that is something that needs to be taken into consideration. They need to go over the rules of an advisory board, and that is in the records as far as NRS or whatever you want to call it. So an advisory board would be great as far as I'm concerned, but they also need to follow what that board needs to do. And it hasn't been in the last two or three years that I've been around. So that's just something to take into consideration. But I mean, I feel we do need one. Uh, it's nice to have other thoughts of what needs to go on at that rodeo grounds. We are expanding. It is not the same as it was in the past. Uh, we've got a lot of improvements going on, and there will be some changes. So I just want to let, if the board is going to be active, they need to know this and stuff. So. Keith, was there something policy-wise or structurally that changed in the last two, three years that would have Okay. It's not changed, it just wasn't followed. 
Thank you, Rita. So, I, okay. I, I guess a little I, history here. Four can years I ago finish what I was saying, please? Yeah. Is I think that um, what you say has a lot of merit, and I do realize, uh, I think that was one of the issues of putting this on the agenda was how things had changed, is possibly once the new, new board is organized again, you know, we get enough members and, and whatnot, is possibly to go through with our, our DA's office yes. to go through the bylaws again. And, and it is an advisory board, so yes, they cannot go free reign with what they want. Right. They have, they have, have, you know, they are an advisory to you and Public Works. <coughs> and that might be something to look into possibly changing some bylaws. And, and it would be, I mean, it's not a problem that I would be at all of their meetings that they have just to kind of oversee what their ideas and their plans are. Or, for what they might have to do, but uh, yeah, it, I just thought I'd better bring it up. So I guess I don't want us getting in trouble. Right, with an advisory board, you very well can get in trouble with the state and federal. One of the other things is I think we need to look into the dates as far as the members, as, as Mr. Price has mentioned, that apparently a couple of the gentlemen still are considered active. Actually, not in not in the book. I, I went through it, and, and I'm going to have to do some research on, on, on your two guys, Mo, uh, Monty, because it says all five members have expired. So, but we'll we'll deal with it accordingly. We'll we'll have to advertise properly. So I'll I'll get with uh, Monty, and then once it out, you guys will know, and you can submit letters. And we do need to stagger it too, because I by this everybody expires at the same time. Yeah. So we'll we'll have That's to. Correct. Stagger that. Mm -hmm. So kind of start all over. And, and being an advisory board, I mean, we all know an advisory board is just an advisory board. But in, in somewhere in the process, we need to know who do we advise to? Do we advise to the commission? Do we advise to Rita? Do we advise to Keith? Who, who, is, who is it we answer to? Go ahead. Okay. I just want to, so uh, I want to clarify that the advisory board reports they advise to the commission. They work. They can work with, with Reed and Bert and all of that. But the advisory board advises to the county commissioners. Okay. But we can sit down and, and once you get the, the board in place, um, I'll be happy to come to a meeting and we can discuss all that stuff and get it all out. And try to answer any questions. Are we also okay? Yeah. <coughs> One of the big problems four years ago was uh, use. Anybody and everybody was using the rodeo grounds, and then if there was an event, people would go two days, three days <clears throat> to check out the rodeo grounds, and they had two weeks of work to get finished. So that that was a big issue, and you know I checked that out pretty good. So I mean I don't know where the line is between use and preparation. So that's for you guys to figure. Um. Actually, Bert could probably answer this. Ever since Bert's got involved, that rodeo grounds is great. He has kept that grounds where anybody that's on a horse doesn't mind using the rodeo grounds. I, for one. Um, and because of that, it has let people, you know, start coming down and, and working their horses that don't have a place to work horses. The grounds are great. And like you said, the youth, you know, um, I've been over there working on the concession stand, and every day I've been there, somebody has been there with their horses and with their kids. So it's being used, it's great. Uh, like I said, um, when we did, when we got on the advisory board, and like I said, I've been off and on for a while, um, I believe it's just a year that you have to take and reapply, or, or is it two years? They're staggered. Uh, it's, but it's 19, still 19, 20. two year term. Two year term. Okay. And they have to realize they have to, you know, reapply. They usually get notified to reapply. But I know there have been problems in the last four or five years. I've been off of it. I got off of it for a reason. Um, and so, uh, I mean, I, I think it's a good viable group. I think we need it. Uh, and that way we can. 
really get something going at that venue again. And like I said, we've got new ground. We're putting in, I don't know if you know it or not, but we've got that whole other section of ground over there now that belongs to Lambert County. So Bert and the ball went over there, putting it all. We're moving crowds back. We're enlarging the <coughs> it's, it's going to be a great place for any event or anything that will go on in this county. Carnivals, you know. So, so one of the anything. So <laughs> one of the things I know that, that did actually cause some issues in the last couple of years was um, sort of changing of members. And I know that it was brought before the board on several occasions discussing fees. And I think that kind of did cause some contention. I know it's not an issue to discuss now and possibly once the board is, is assembled and whatnot is, is a discussion for that. My personal feelings, and you know, this is not really totally pertaining, but as you mentioned, Rita, um, people utilize that and it is public. You know, it's county property, it's open to everyone and they should be able to use it. Um, in the event of special issues, possibly there could be some fees charged, but that will have to be something that the advisory board will, will recommend. Right. But right now, let's get this going and, and get you guys organized and, and go from there and make it a, a wonderful place. It, it will be a great place. Well, thank you for stepping up to volunteer uh, on this. It's extremely important because advisory boards are our input from the community, and we appreciate you, you doing that for us because that's what really makes the county hum. So we need that input. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. Yeah, we'll, yeah, may we please get the name of the two gentlemen so Keith and I can research that and work together on the terms and that type of deal? Yes. May I get the names? Yes. Adam McKinney. Trader. If I could ask, who, who appointed you guys? I mean, did you come before the, the board and then be appointed? Because that's a, it has to, the board has to approve your appointments. So we just did letters. Yeah. But did you ever come before the board? Okay. Right. I'll go back and look too on that right. and see if, and look for the agenda item and look for their letters. All right, thanks. Dave. We right. received a letter back, but then there's no follow through and okay. I honestly didn't know where for the next step or okay well, we'll get it we'll get it straight for you guys we appreciate you thank you so I, I also in the process we will have to advertise for these vacancies and um, I don't know if you'll be notified before just be aware of it that it will be in the paper for advertisement for vacancies for the advisory board to submit your letters and I think you could probably do it beforehand. I mean, if you've got a letter, go ahead and give it to the administration office, and they'll have it. But it is something we are required to advertise for. Did, was there any more public comment? For, and so I just want everybody to know, from my stance, I'm in full support of the board of having this advisory board. I think it's a great thing, and we're here to work with you guys, not against you. So I just want to make that make that clear. You know, I don't want to think that it's us against you. It's, it's make the place better. So whatever. We so we go ahead for a vote. Did we get a second? I think we voted yet. No, I know, but I mean, you made a motion. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. So all, all second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Get your letter in right away so that we can put you on the board so you have more. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. All right. So number four. Discussion and possible action to approve or disapprove health care package for Lambert County employees. For the United Healthcare, there has been a zero increase. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield would have been a 27% increase, and all other matters properly related there, too. So, this is our, our uh, county health benefits for from July 1st, uh, 2019, to June 30th, um, 2020. Uh, the committee met. Um, the, this, these are the recommendations we have. Um, there has I've received calls, concerns with United Healthcare, um, and I've asked those people that have those concerns to come forward and to express <coughs> concerns. And I also asked uh, Tim Holland to be here. He's our LP broker of record for our insurance, so the board can make a, a, a 
a good solid decision on, on a way to go for benefits for county employees. So, Tim? One thing in the past years I've noticed that when we do actually have a change in insurance companies that we we actually have the visual comparisons is you know we can look at them side by side of, of how things play out and we don't have that now um, another note is I, I did speak with a county employee yesterday that voiced concerns and I understand that um, that she has gotten several um, discussions with various other employees throughout the county and one thing I have to say about that is I appreciate that I, I would also like to say that you know if, if people have concerns um, they also need to come to the commissioners we don't bite <laughs> um, as I understand talking to fellow employees and whatnot but as Keith mentioned you know we, we've heard these things but we actually haven't heard them from the people themselves and I think it has a whole lot more power if the employees come to us you know we're always available um, you know by phone whatever is you know we're, we're not going to bite you and and we need that input as well and I appreciate that there are other employees that you are comfortable speaking with that can voice your opinions to us but kind of need the strength in numbers I guess um, my background of course is in insurance for the last 50 years and, um, and especially active in the health field and I can tell you no matter what company you're with that things do go wrong whether they haven't paid a bill properly or somebody's double billed you or it's too lengthy or whatever but the bottom line on that is that that's what we have an agency for that represents us and a call to them and you can start with with HR you can go directly to him um, whatever is comfortable but those things need to be worked on individually. And then if it's a group that we need to um, handle for the commissioners, I mean, if there's a, a whole area that isn't being addressed, then yes, that, that needs to come to us at that point. But otherwise, individually, when people just complain, I'm going, there's a problem, let's fix it. And they're the ones that fix it right now. Um, I know we've had two or three issues in the, in the Austin area that I'm very familiar with, and we just call. I mean, sometimes it takes a while to fix it, but there again, that's what your agent is for. Um, and just looking at it, and, and whatever the commissioners decide, I, I understand. Um, I was really surprised we didn't have any increase, but along with that is, um, this is a brand new company for us. We've only been with them a year, and I just hate to see us bouncing all over the place. Um, other companies don't like that either. Of course, we were with Blue Cross Blue Shield previously, so it's nice they kind of want us back but I, I like to see something that's continuous for a while so we can actually build up a good experience behind us when we do decide that we want to go out for bid and need a change and that way we can make modifications if we know what needs to be modified there's always going to be in trouble with insurance just the way it is well and I think part of the issue is, is the lack of understanding knowing how to use your insurance and unfortunately, somebody who's had to use their insurance, uh, not under when you when they do have the meetings and say, if you have questions, come and he'll be here to answer. Well, 98% of us don't have questions that day when he's here, so we skip the meeting. Well, then two or three months down the road, we have issues and the sky is falling. So I think that that's one of the biggest issues is we don't know how to use our insurance properly or the right chain to call. Or you want to try to do it yourself, and the more the harder you try to do it this, yourself, the more frustrated. Where if you just call him and let him be, take on the frustration it makes life a lot easier so oh, I, I don't use the insurance how many people in here use the insurance <coughs> and like it <laughs> <laughs> see I think that says a lot and I know last year when we did go to United there was some some issues regarding that and I, I just I think I'd like to hear if if anyone's willing to come up and explain some of the issues with that they have with with United. Hi. My name is Leslie Bunch, the Lander County Recorder, but I'm here as Leslie Bunch today. Mm -hmm. um, 
I have had a lot of individuals come to me and tell me their issues that they've had with United Health. But I will speak, I can speak on their behalf. They don't feel comfortable, they're working. They've asked me so I can talk about it, but I will not give you their names. Um, many individuals, and I think the most, the biggest issue is the wellness. They've gone to their doctors, they've had their wellness checkup, they've had to pay their own lab fees and pay their PAP fees, and the doctors have told them they are no longer going to be taking the insurance, and from now on it will be out of pocket. The insurance sucks. Sorry to say it that way, but that's the truth. They say that their payments are horrible, they, uh, they're not dealing with them anymore, and I have years of experience <coughs> also in the insurance billing. And if you start having to jump through a ton of hoops to get something paid, you quit. And it's a courtesy that the doctor's offices give you to, cut, to work with your insurance. I've been told by St. Mary's that we have the second worst insurance in the state. Uh, my personal doctor, now I have lost five and I'm tired of losing doctors, I'm sorry. Um, I have been told that they don't understand why our county would go with such a lousy insurance. It's the worst in the state. That's what I've been told, and have, others have been told the same. I would appreciate it if you guys would please consider. There's always, like you said, there's always issues with insurance. You will never have it easy. There's always hoops to jump through. There's always rules to follow. But this insurance has proven to be one of the worst I have ever seen or ever had to deal with. I've had to give up doctors that I have had for years for issues I've had surgeries on. And I can't go back to them because I honestly can't afford out of pocket. Just a, just a bill <coughs> is $334. Well, $60 a month is a one, or $60 a paycheck if you are paying for others, is a wonderful benefit, especially for mothers. Who are, or, or families that don't have fathers or mothers, it really helps. But it only helps if the insurance is good and it, you're not having to pay out of pocket. I'm just really asking you guys to please consider changing. It is not good. It is, you know, five doctors says a lot. They won't even deal with them. I can't make them deal with them, and I don't want to lose any more. So um, for my own benefit, I'm asking, and for the others that now have to pay all their lab fees and their visits out of pocket. Some have been with their doctors 20 years, and they have to go to someone else. Some have had to leave Nevada and go to Twin Falls just to get a doctor that has this insurance. So I'm just asking for you to really consider. I know 27% is a lot of money, and I understand that. But if it's a good benefit and if it's a good plan, I call um, I call, I have to, I'll have to read it because now I'm nervous. Pershing, Ryan, Elko, and Churchill and ask them just, for, just to find out what insurances they deal with. And they deal with Cigna. They deal with uh, UA, UC Health, which I've never heard of. That's Elko. And one is with Hometown Health. I know that, that Fallon, the Fallon area, have a lot of major illnesses in that area. So I know Cigna for that area works very, very well for them. I'm just, I'm just asking you, please. To well, I've asked about hometown health a number of times because it's just a great plan. You don't have, you have co-pays, but there's no deductibles, and you can keep your doctors. And even though hometown health is based in Reno, you take the HMO, and because you have the 90-mile rule, we're safe. So uh, I like hometown health. I've said that before. I'm just, well, I'm just saying, okay. I really would appreciate it. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. So I, I have also heard from, from different um, insureds that, yeah, why don't we stick with a, policy, a, a, a carrier? You know, we are bouncing around, and it's, it's trying to find the right fit, and, you know, we had hometown for a while, had prominence, and, and I agree that it'd be nice to find a carrier that we can stick with. But if we're paying, I mean, as much insurance as, as much as we put into insurance for our employees and we've offered them dependent care, we need to offer them something that works. And if United is not working, then we can't even consider that. Go with something that our employees can actually utilize because that's an absolute waste of money to be paying the premiums that we are when you cannot utilize your insurance. 
I'd like to hear from our agent. Yeah, so would I. Mm. Uh, Tim Owen with LP Insurance. Every year I meet which, with each employee of, uh, of the county, and I could go to many departments and many people and say the other side of that, but like, this is absolutely fantastic, it's worked great for me. And, and, and when, when insurance works, it's, you're, not, it, you're not supposed to have an issue, you don't hear those people, because it works. Um, it's seamless, I've had a lot of great feedback from United Healthcare, because before that we had uh, prominence, they couldn't use Renown. So I think one very, very important thing, and it's my job to do this, is to tell you where you were, where you are, and where you're going. You did have Anthem. Um, the reason you left Anthem, because they wanted unbelievable increases in cost. Prominence came in with a much better uh, rate, and, and Marla was a big champion this, because you could go to the University of Utah Hospital. That was huge. <coughs> you, you was Prominence. Uh, the county ran at about 130% loss ratio meaning Prominence lost 30%. They paid out more, 30% more money than they received in premium. So we're looking at very large increases there. Uh, United Healthcare came in. One of the reasons United Healthcare came in is because they used both. They used St. Mary's and they used Hometown. So the need that everybody wanted Hometown and Renown in the network, United Healthcare satisfied that. What we lost was the University of Utah emergency room. We have everything around the University of Utah. We have Huntsman Cancer, Cancer Center. You have everything. But the reason we went back to Anthem, you see this increase, is Anthem is the only company in the state of Nevada that's going to give you every single hospital plus the University of Utah. They have many of their own issues on their own, just like everybody has said. Um, but Anth the only reason Anthem is being shown this year is they're the only carrier that will satisfy everybody's need. Other than that, there are going to be some employees that are going to have some disruption. And there always will be. You can't please everybody. But I think you try and, and do what's best for the, for the majority. Right. One of the, one of the big, reason, big problems we have up here, the world runs around what's called a CPT code. It means a carrier, Anthem, United Healthcare, Hometown Health, St. Mary's, Promise, you name it. They run a CPT code. What that means is this procedure is reimbursed at this level. And you have a couple physicians out here. One um, that I've been dealing with quite a bit, his name is Dr. Rosenquist. He refuses to contract with a lot of insurers because they will not pay what he wants in reimbursement. I have the CPT codes right here. They're just above everybody, and so he badmouths insurance companies. They're bad, they're horrible, they're the worst in the state, they don't pay me anything. But he won't contract with them. And so the health carrier, they're saying, I have 20 doctors over here that will accept the reimbursement level, and I have, and but he does not, and so that's a big issue going on right now. Okay, Marla Sam, for the record, um, because I'm a union person, a lot of uh, people have called me, and they again can't be here today, or they don't want to talk. People are not comfortable coming to the commission with these kinds of things, so I'm representing myself, and for those who have talked to me. They have asked me to please not keep United Healthcare. That for them, it's the same problem. They go to their doctors, they can't get waited on, they have to go to Twin Falls, they, you know, it's awful. You've went to this doctor for 30 years and all of a sudden, well, I'm not gonna take your health insurance because it doesn't pay anything. It, I, it takes too long for them to pay. They're a terrible insurance, I just won't deal with it anymore. So here again, they're having to, to travel very far. Twin Falls, Salt Lake, a couple of them go to Reno. But you know, a couple of days off of work if you have to go. In my situation, I went to my doctor for uh, my gynecology for years. I now, because he will not take my health insurance, drive to Salt Lake City to the Huntsman to do something that I could do here in, in, in Elko if they had his insurance that he would, would acknowledge. Um, I went to uh, the University of Utah because everybody knows my problems that I have, and I have a $204.30 bill. They pay $47. I owe $157.10. That's how good they are. So what good does it do for you guys to pay the, hu the amount of money that you pay every month to, the, to the United Healthcare if this is a benefit for me? I, don't, I, I think you're wasting your money. But I said that in the insurance committee meeting already. So, you know, in sticking up for the people that 
that have to go to the to Utah because that's where their surgeons are, or because their doctors in Reno won't take them anymore because of, of the United Healthcare. You know, they're just asking to please look at it again and see. <coughs> you know, we we all realize 27% is a huge increase. You know, none of us are illiterate like that. But what good is United Healthcare at zero percent if you get nothing for your money? And so I just would appreciate it if you would just look at it again and think about it and, and try to consider the people that have the, the big issues. And there was quite a few of them. You okay. know, there is quite a few of them. And I, you know, and I hate to, to uh, I wish they would come and speak, but they're not going to. And so, uh, but I appreciate your time. And you know, please, please consider. And thanks. You did What's the job. annual cost? We're at about 1.3 right now. Can I add one thing to that? Um, sometimes, uh, Commissioner, answer it comes to what you said. People don't know about their medicine. We have costs, and United Healthcare or Hometown or St. Mary's or Prominence, they're a payor. They receive a CPT code from a doctor, and they process that payment. A lot of times, we don't know if that doctor has um, is it just strictly a copay? Is it partial deductible? Do we owe part full insurance? So you get a hundred and sixty one dollar bill, and you're you know, you pay $47 of it. A lot of times that is your amount due. It's not free. We have skin in the game until we hit a certain point. And so um, I have, I represent every single insurance company in the state of Nevada. Um, the ones that, a couple that they named, Pershing, Lion, Churchill, Elko, all have different needs. Um, Elko, you have to have U of U. If you want hometown health, which is big in Lyon County, they send all of their experts to Stanford. So if you want the residents of Lander County to go to Stanford for all of their specialty work and not go to U of U, we have to look at those things. Um, there's reasons that uh, Anthem, Prominence, and UHC are very strong in Lander County because they do allow a great centers of excellence throughout the state and into Utah. And they don't drive all the care to California. Well, I have one thing I have to say. that When they, when they say that you can use the Huntsman, well, you can use the huntsman in the huntsman, but if they need anything done at the university, nothing's covered. <coughs> so the fact that they say, oh, that's something that bothers me, is that, yeah, the huntsman, well, that's nice, as long as it's done, that whatever they can do is done sure. at that hospital. So I think that it's, um, to a degree, false advertising when they say, you know, that, because everybody assumes the huntsman with the U of U. And right. if, you know, you or your doctor does all of his stuff out of the U and U, it's of no use to go to the Huntsman. And I can tell you that UHC, Hometown, they all try to contract with U of U, but it's U of U that this does not contract with them. Yeah, and I, I understand, I realize yeah. that. Tim, what, what's the difference between the coverage of United Health and Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield? What's uh, the, the plan design is identical. So the deductibles, co-pays, everything would be the same. You have some differences in the formulary for the prescription drugs. Um, Anthem's a little more rogue. They have, uh, they'll, they'll bring on maybe a few more. But the main difference is you'd be able to access University of Utah Hospital. Now, I want to remind you, that could change tomorrow. I mean, provider networks, hospitals, pharmacy, everything is it's, it's weekly almost. So. So it'd be about three hundred thousand dollars increase, but we don't know if if it's going to if there's the the larger portion of the policy is going to be the same as United Healthcare, we're still going to have <coughs> problems. I believe I do have a solution, but I have not spoke to Keith and Liz about it yet. And if you're okay with me speaking freely, I think I have some information. We got to make the decision. So mm -hmm. to see your costs go by twenty seven percent, and how and and when you get to a point where maybe you don't cover the dependents anymore. Maybe you have to make decisions where we're back to employee only and dependent costs are all on the dependents. You're going to have anarchy trying to pass on a $1,200 child rate to somebody because you want 27% higher to get something. So um, I think you can, you can implement what's called an HRA, and that's called a health reimbursement account. What that means is that let's say we have somebody who goes to an ad network physician and they get charged $330 for that visit. The county can go ahead and say, I'm not going to increase my health plan by 25% cost, thousands and thousands of dollars, but if you bring this CPT code in and it matches what 
like it's a two hundred and seventy dollar office visit for a doctor that's not in the network, go ahead and just reimburse that employee the office visit. You'd save a tremendous amount on your overall budget, and and you're talking maybe two or three visits a year. That's always been available. I just don't think that all of the individuals understand that. Correct. Um, and and it's like insurance. You never know. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, whether that's going to work out well for you because you didn't have any claims for a year or six months, or right. whether it's going to be one you get really hit with badly and some, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollar $200,000 hospital bills. So right. the risk is there. Insurance is for large items. That's right. It really is. So if you can, an OBGYN, OBGYN visit twice a year, once a year or a specialist once a year, and you can just come out of pocket, it's called a health reimbursement account, okay? It can be used for anybody that is not on the HSA. If they're on the PPO, if they're on Medicare, if they're on what, what Art's doing, you can do it. They just cannot be part of an HRA and an HSA at the same time. So, I think it sounds great, um, and I don't know the you know, response from, from the employees, I will speak for myself. I'm really bad at keeping receipts and turning things in, and and that can be an issue with, you know, I mean, I'm not alone in that. Some people are great. They save every little receipt for everything and, and can do that. Is who processes that information? Would that be to be sent into you or um, how if if Leslie? you know, gets that, that receipt and she needs reimbursed, who does she give it to? It would go to the county. Okay, so. I mean, this is an internal. It's all internal, okay. Because yeah. um, it will not, it won't, it won't see deductible really. It won't see out of pocket max. What's that? Just You're just and the $334 is just yeah, for this to come up. Okay, you need to come up, Leslie, I'm sorry. please. Two things I want to say. One, Lyon County has just changed from its present insurance to Cigna, so they don't have to go to Stanford anymore because that was tough. The second thing is um, to give my information to you for reimbursement is a HIPAA violation unless I choose to. And that's, for some people, that's harder than for other people to do. And the third thing is, the doctors don't take this, this current insurance. They take Aetna. And if those are our choices, then I would really appreciate that you would go with it because it is, it is such a benefit to get that insurance help once you've met your deductible. And, you know, wellness has always been covered. It's not been something we've had to pay out of pocket. And there are a lot of people that really can't afford that, and that's, Regardless of what, and I know it's expensive, and I'm really sorry about that. I don't know what to say. I just know how hard it is for some people to meet the extra money that this one is requiring and having to change their whole doctor and all of their background history. And I'm sorry, the doctor you've been with for 20 years knows you and does, isn't really concerned about everything other than you. You don't have to go as a number. You go as an individual. And I think that's the hardest part. And five times I've had to change. And I really appreciate your concern. I really would. Thank you. I'm sorry. I keep coming. Tim, are there other people in the state that use United Healthcare? Yeah, their United Healthcare is the largest insurer in the nation. <clears throat> and I have to address something. It's not a HIPAA violation. HIPAA violation is name, social security number, diagnosis, what is actually going on. All she would be bringing is a receipt that says physician paid amount and submission. There's no HIPAA violation whatsoever. HRAs are done everywhere. And then I have a question for you, Liz. Do you hear a lot of negative comment about the insurance we use? I mean, people come to you. It's a 50-50. I have people that don't have an issue with it because they probably don't use it as much as those that do have an issue with it. But I do have people that complain, but I also have people that pay it all out of pocket. But it was the same with Providence. You had people that complained, and you had people that had didn't have a problem. Huh? They can't hear it. Oh. So when you, you guys, they can't hear up here, so when you speak, will yeah, you pretty no, please come, come up? Off. Sorry about that. <coughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, before Liz gets up here, I'll, I'll, I will make another comment. 
in light of what she said is I don't use my insurance much at all. So I have never had an issue with it. Um, <coughs> but then again, I am one of those that don't use it. And I just want to look out for the people that actually do. Sorry. Nope, you got to come up. <laughs> Sorry. Sit right there, Liz. <laughs> have a seat, Liz. <laughs> Thank you. Elizabeth Barella. And I, I have people that complain about it, but I have people that, like I said, that don't complain because they don't use it. I use the insurance, and I don't have an issue with it. My doctors take the insurance, and I've had nobody turn me away. I get what these guys are saying, but we also had the same problem with prominence. Prominence, we had people that had issues because yeah. their bills weren't getting paid, and... I, I mean, it's a hit and miss everywhere you go on all of them. Okay, Liz, can I ask you a question? Where do, where are your doctors located? Reno. Winnemucca? Reno. Reno. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the health care package from Anthem, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield for Lander County employees. Lincoln Sullivan, sorry, can I speak? Lincoln Sullivan, for the record. I just wanted to remind you guys, because Cindy's not here today, but we only budgeted for a 20% increase on insurance. I know that. I just wanted to point that out. And I, I know you guys have it on today to approve the final budget, and the money's not in there for that big of an increase. Um, so I just wanted to, to point that out. And also, from Liz and I's standpoint, it is very short time frame to change insurance right now, considering we have to pay in June. We would have to pay anthem in June and that's like not even two weeks away so well I think that that's kind of um, you know I, I, I almost feel like that's being held over our head that we actually have to go with United and I don't agree with that um, as far as the budget goes I know you know things can be changed and altered a little bit um, not that we like to do that um, I don't know if there's any way that Tim could beat up Anthem and get it a little lower? <laughs> I, I have a question. So on this 27% for Anthem, because we keep hopping around a different insurance, is there, if you were to stay with, if the county was to stay with United for one more year, do you think the, the, the Blue Cross Blue Shield would come down? <laughs> you don't know what I'm saying. I know that sounds like a stupid question, but I mean, that, I, I, but hear me out, please. I know that that sounds stupid, but hear me out. Because we jump around, your your in their increases are going to be higher because we have no background that they can base anything off because you're hopping from insurance to insurance. Where if you have a couple of years worth of with an insurance, as far as different ones, does that does that calculate at all into the increases? I think what they look at, Tim, right? You said they spent out more than they took in. So that's the bottom well, that's line. That's a track record to follow, is it okay. not? Correct. Yeah. So I mean, it's your utilization. Is, your utilization. Utilization right. is everything. Okay. So then my question is, with that is, if the utilization is everything, then how can United Healthcare come back with it? I, which is an excellent. Don't. I'm not complaining about the the zero increase. If we're paying out more than. Um, how can they come back with a zero? How is that, those numbers even, if the county, if, if they're, you know, if the insurance is paying out more than the county is giving them. That was prominence. Right, that was prominence. That was prominence. So, oh, okay. We, we haven't, I mean, we haven't even finished our year with okay, United Health. Okay, all right, all right. But all to right, answer your other question, if we have a fabulous claims experience for a couple of years, Companies do come in less, but but the gamble is insurance. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to understand that. I mean, I know that sounds like a silly question. But I have the no. data right here if you want. Uh, uh, no, that's all right. I just was going ahead. <laughs> no, it's all based on utilization. How they come back with a 0% increase. And I can tell you that I have the numbers. They pay just as much as any other company. We've had months where they paid, our premium was $154,000, and they paid out $162,000 in, in claims. That was last month. So... They're paying, wow. believe me. Denise, Except fortune for the, ones for the they record. They, they might be paying, but they're not paying all of our doctors. Um, I had the same doctor in Elko for 25 years. I just went last week. Uh, between the hospital and the county, I've been a county employee for 28 years. I know you guys don't want to jump around. I get to where I don't even know what insurance I have. I go to the doctor, and they're like, what's your insurance? I'm like, I don't even know. Because we do jump around so much. But on the other side of that, I went to Dr. Winch last week. I have dual insurance. I've had dual insurance for 28 years. I had to pay Dr. Winch out of my pocket. 
I have never done that in 28 years. So I understand you can't please everybody. I understand you guys are tired of jumping around. But there are people in the county that have gone to the same doctors for a lot of years. We're not going to change doctors. And if the insurance isn't going to cover it, we're going to have to pay it out of our pocket. So... Tim, why wouldn't the insurance cover it? That's, I mean, is it, that's what I mean. I, keep, I, I asked them, Brian. I yeah. said, why are you guys not taking my insurance? They said, we don't take United. They stink. I don't think he used the word stink. I think he right. used something else. Right. But. And you said, Tim, they're like one of the country's largest? They are the country's largest. Now, now talking about the country aside, right. the state of Nevada. You know what? Again, you have a very, I, I think Elko is a very unique animal because their doctors there are so fat and happy with the mining, they really don't care about the outside company. So you have a Dr. Wench, and <coughs> some of the companies don't have an OBGYN uh, for hundreds and hundreds of miles because the doctors just refuse to contract with some of the companies because they're getting they're they're just they're they're getting paid more money by some of the self-insured mines, and they don't have any appointments available. So I have I have complete empathy for some some of these. But the other thing is, Elko has three OBGYNs. They used to have around eleven. A couple went off to war. Couple retired, one got pregnant, moved away. They have, I think, three OBGYNs in all of Elko. There's more appointments than there are. They don't. They can't. They don't need the work. Supply and demand. I still don't think that, regardless, if if our insurance is not providing coverage for our employees, then. <laughs> And that's the point I was going to make right. when they said that prominence is staying at zero. Well, they can probably afford to stay at zero because there's a bunch of us paying money out of our pocket. They're not covering us. The doctors are not taking that insurance. At least Elko is not. A lot of us go to Elko Reno, Reno. And, and Reno. And my husband's family doctors over in Elko, Dr. Bergeron, he does not take United Healthcare. We have to pay out of our pocket. Doesn't take... Um, his insurance and doesn't take my insurance. And, and some parts of the Elko Hospital don't take Medicare. So, I mean, I, you're right. Elko yeah. is, is a different mm -hmm. animal, but in Battle Mountain, that's one of our options. So, Well, I, and I don't have a dog in a fight because I don't use this insurance. <coughs> and I, I didn't take the insurance. But I have to say, the neurologist I go to, which I'm not switching neurologists because you can't get very good neurologists for the issues that I have, would not take this insurance even if I did. And I'm not trying to make it harder, but I know that people who have serious, you know, there's people who have serious health concerns that they can't be seen by those type of specialists. That if I didn't have my husband's insurance and I took this insurance, I wouldn't be able to go to that. I wouldn't go to the doctor. I mean, I would just stay here and go to the clinic and just have my meds redone. So, I mean, that's a, it's a struggle when you do have health you know, it's easy when you don't, but you do have health issues. It's, and that 27% is sickening, and I just, um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't, but I don't know. The other part I can say is I'm in Landon County a lot. We have set up multiple times for people to come and say, what are your issues? How can we help? What can we do? And nobody came forward. I've talked to Marla nonstop. I mean, we know what's going on there, but... I mean, I have two people come Tim, up, and we're welcome. here for the, pretty much the whole day. Welcome to our world. <laughs> well, we must so, be paying I want to know these things. They have to be paying some bills because they're, uh, they're certainly paying a lot of money in claims. Yeah, I mean, exactly. we have to look at that. And the other thing is, um, perhaps they need to look at, at, at doing a different, taking the HRA or something um, uh, individually, because I know doctors get very expensive, but the biggest key is, if they were hospitalized, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars on some of these things. And at least we'd have coverage where we really need the big, big bucks. So, you know, maybe we have to look at something with a, a much higher deductible at some time and, and really go into this earlier next year. Um, I mean, and I, I, I was just with a group yesterday, and I listened to six people complain about the Elko insurance. It's the worst insurance they've ever had. And, and yet... That's six people out of how many hundreds? I mean, I, I know we have to make some really hard decisions today. Um, and, and either way, it's going to be a tough one. I understand that. But I really appreciate the time frame and crunch that we're on right now, too. 
And I think yes. that would really be a mess for the county. We we kind of were in it a couple years ago and we changed and uh, it, it was, wasn't was good. They were getting notices we hadn't paid their, their bills. Remember that? That the county hadn't paid? Mm -hmm. I just want to say one thing regarding Tim. Those that did come to me that had problems, I contacted him, Amber, and Stephanie, and they took care of it within a couple of days. So any problems that did come to me, they were all taken care of. I make a motion. I already to made a motion. To fix insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll second that. But there's no second. Yeah. 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 So um, I understand the timeline. You know, it, it's bad, um, but I really, you know, we added dependent coverage to try to keep our employees with Lander County. Uh, we've gone out of our way to try and, and keep the employees that we have because we have great employees. And I am getting more feedback here saying they don't like United. And if we have to spend a little bit more, which it is totally unreasonable, but I think it's something we really need to do is for the good of, of the employees of the county to keep them and you know going with a higher deductible isn't going to help because you can't always afford the deductibles you need an insurance you can use and I'm standing by my motion well I think that I don't want to put the county in a crunch when they only budgeted for 20 percent I think that's kind of um, so that that is correct. We budgeted. We didn't budget for this. It is going to be. Uh, it would be a challenge to get it done, but it can be done. I want. I don't want you guys to base your decision on us having to change the budget. I, I, I want to make sure that, that you make the best decision that you that the best decision you that, that you feel is correct. We we can do it. It's just going to be. It'll take us some time. Remember also, we, we um, uh, renew our, our insurance uh, annually. So this is just a one-year right. deal. We'll, we'll look at this again next year. We try to get to it as early as we can, but there's things that come into play. We, I, could, I could have Tim start looking into next year, but nothing's going to happen until all those companies get together and they start looking at our past history and say, oh, wait a minute, we have this that we have to take into consideration in this. So we get to it pretty much as soon as we can get to it when the companies will get back to, to LP and say, this company's offering this much and this company's offering this much. So that's kind of the way it works. I have a, a question. So on the HRA portion of it that you're saying, that they, they can, is that something that we already have? In place or something that we can put in place put in place tomorrow well what happens if for example they go to a doctor that doesn't take that insurance can they bring the entire bill to the county and let them pay it I would put restrictions on it I mean it's this we're looking at co-pays you right. use mm -hmm. the doctor to get so a yeah they, they pay yeah they if they were to pay a copay normal standard copay and then the county pick up the rest sure I mean I think that because if you did that then by next year we could see where we're at. And like if they, if you have a doctor that you, they go in and they don't pay anything, but because they, they don't like the insurance, you would pay have the person pay the standard copay and then bring the bill back to the county, and have them pay because next year, boy, would that give us an eye-opening experience of how much it's truly costing these people out of their pockets. Um, by increasing your payments, you know, forty thousand dollars a month, I think that could take care of a lot of doctor visits. I don't think I understood what you I mean, just if said. If somebody goes and sees a physician that's not in the network and it costs two hundred eighty dollars, and they bring that in, that's going to be a heck of a lot more savings than increasing your guaranteed amount. Okay. Bill. So is that? I mean, that is that much. something that we can do? Does that sound feasible? I mean, because then by then you're going to know all of these people who aren't going to come forward, <laughs> and we're going to start paying these people's doctor's bills other than the copay. You're going to know where they truly stand and what they're paying out of their pockets. Not that I'm debating what they're saying, but. Proof is in the paper when they're bringing us our their bills and we're paying all of these doctor bills because then you're going to know just exactly what United is truly paying and what they're not paying. Right. Marla, for the record. Marla, 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 we have to come up. How many people is this going to impact for you to dump this on them? I don't think I don't I don't think I, I don't I think, think I understand. What HR is going to do it. No. Payroll is going to do it. Who's 
cut my check. Well, that's not what I'm saying. If no, they I'm want asking to, the question. Well, let me finish what I'm saying, please. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to dump anything on any. I know truly that's not my intention. Mine, when I'm thinking through it, I'm thinking, you know, his idea of the HRA. If that they're turning in an invoice, just like they, everybody else turns in invoices to the county, and they're cutting out checks, like you say your doctor wasn't covered, and you pay your $40 copay, your rest of your bill is $300, you bring in your doctor bill, you submit it like everybody else, so who besides okay. accounts payable is going to... Number one, what makes you think that I want anybody in this county to know what doctor I go to for what reason? And I can respect that. So I'm just, I, and I really, respect, no, and, and I truly and respect that. That's pushback so, you're going to get. From no, and I understand, and I respect that. I just don't know what the answer, I don't know what the answer is. So thinking outside the box, and I, and I respect that. So, because that's what you're going to get. Okay. So, and I understand what Marla's saying is, you know, we're putting an extra burden on our, our accounts payable department. You know, and on the other hand, you know, is... I don't go to the doctor, but if I have to, you know, say if I do go in for something, you know, I, I'm, I don't know what average cost is, $300, you know, I can afford my copay, but if that doctor didn't take my insurance, I can't pay that $300 at that time. I'm sorry, I, it, you know, it's just one of those things that, and I know I'm not alone, is it's a lot of our employees aren't going to have that extra money to be able to bring the receipt back and say, here, reimburse me. One appointment for me is sometimes over $1,000. Exactly. Well, and I, and I, like I said, I really respect that. I'm just trying to think outside the box. Well, I think it's, it's a good option in some respects, but, but just like that is, you know, it does create more work for our accounting department. For, you know, there is, is some, you know, even though it doesn't totally... Um, break the hippas, but but yeah, there's there's privacy issues, and then the fact of the matter is is you know like I said, I would go to the doctor more if I could afford it, but even to, to pay a couple hundred dollars or as Marla said, you know a thousand dollars, that's a couple weeks before you're going to get reimbursed yeah, for that. And I get and I respect that. So how well was because I can't remember um, when when we had Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield before, didn't we have that? Before? 2014. That's so. The pe most of the people were here. I mean, were they a good payer? Are they a good payer? I never had any problems. I never had a problem. Not one. I had two surgeries. Yeah, two doctors. And, and, and the Jim, did you, did you have data otherwise? I mean, did you have people calling you when we have it with problems? Or? The main was the, the big increase in cost. Right. The, the increase. Yeah, but no, an Anthem's great insurance. I, hey, I will be happy to go down and bang on their heads and try to reduce the cost here. But I'll guarantee you, next year, you'll have people come here and say, "This insurance sucks. Yeah. It's not covering what I need." But you'll make you'll make you'll make this you'll make these people happy, and these people will be unhappy. But you have but a broader spe spectrum of where they can be seen by their doctors. Correct. They, the, the beautiful thing about Anthem is they charge more because you have a la carte services. You can you can check yourself right in the Mayo Clinic if you want. You can self refer. That is why Anthem costs more. You have every hospital generally. Not saying every doctor, but their prescriptions, they're just under Dent Healthcare as far as the largest. The difference between Anthem is um, they're really carved up. If you go to Colorado, it's Rocky Mountain uh, Health Insurance. You go to California, and or here it's Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. You go to California, Blue Cross and Blue Shield actually hate each other. They're, they're in competition with each other. So it's just a different animal. All of your, with Anthem, all of your uh, surgeries, all of your care is done out of Colorado Springs. So that's where all of your, um, Pre-authorizations come from, but Anthem's an amazing company. There's no doubt about that. Do you want to know why you got a zero percent increase? Yeah. Okay. So when uh, United Healthcare brought Lander County on, you have what's called IBNR. It's called incurred but not reported. So your lag, your claims lag about sixty to ninety days. So if somebody goes to the doctor in July. It's actually not paid for until probably September, October. And then you start running this lag time. So now United Healthcare goes and says, okay, we're going to issue the renewal now. They only have about six months of data to issue the renewal. And your numbers look fantastic with that. I mean, they look great. And it's not because they're not paying claims. It's because of the additional revenue when the dependents came on. Oh. You look great right now. 
So they had six months of data to, to issue not only not only the year of 2019, 2020, but they have to do the additional four months in 2019 as well. So it's actually about a 16 month prediction of cost. And so they had just great numbers and said, this is working great. Yeah. For them. <laughs> right. Yes. I get it. I mean, I get it. I mean, it's not, I'm not trying to be snarky. It's just, wow. <coughs> so we have a motion. Is there a second? What was the motion? To approve Anthem. So the motion is going to die. Okay. Nine seconds. Well, okay. I want the insurance fixed, but I don't know that. Like he said, switch you know, we can renew it once a year. I mean, yeah. it gives companies. plenty of time to do some research, to look at other options. Gives the opportunity for me, more people to come forth in the county if they're truly having any problems with it, to express their concern with it. Uh, but it's just the 27% increase, the short window. I, I just, I'm not okay with it. So. Tim, do you think you could get it lower? Yes. I don't know about how much though. The girl who gave us the anthem quotes <laughs> quit. And she now works for Prom. Do, do you think, I mean, realistically, that uh, down to 20%? How late is your meeting going to go today? What's that? How, How late, late is your meeting going to go today? Well, we're on item number four, so. <laughs> yeah. So can we table this for now what, and then. What time is it? It is uh, 1030. If I have an answer for you by 1 o'clock, would that be okay? I think it'll be wrapped up by 1. 11.30? I think we that to, we have to decide this now. I, I think that for to see if we can be at a 20% that giving him a, you think a little truly bit. think it would make any difference? A 20% from 27? We've got a budget. 20 to 27? I don't think so. You're still $260,000 to 20%. Yeah, it's an extra 360 I think. Uh, but it's in the budget. <coughs> it's not. It's, it's I know, the people have spoken. I, I, I don't think that that's going to make any difference with our decision today. I truly don't. Right. Well, then it's open for another motion. If if it was a guarantee that we weren't going to have any problems, <laughs> I mean, I, I'd jump on, you know, $360,000 in the budget that we have, money for our employees. You know, I don't have a problem with that, but it's, insurance is just a mess. And, and if you think it's a mess now, wait until you're, you start Medicare because then you're really a second class citizen. So I, I don't know. I, I made a motion to fix the insurance. So I didn't get it second, so my motion died. I seconded that actually. <laughs> so can we have no a I don't know how to fix it. On the table. So you're going to come back by one o'clock with some numbers? I can go outside and make calls right now and see what they can do and be right back. I, yes. I mean, why don't we take a it's, break it's for a little worth bit? worth at least listening to. At least listening to it. I'm sorry. I think it's worth it. just listening. And if it's not any better, then we at least gave them the opportunity. And I agree with that. So we'll take a 10 minute break. I mean, we can. Yeah, always 10 minutes to come back with <laughs> something better than that. Well, we can, we can always, you know go on other items Perfect. and bring this back. It doesn't have to necessarily be in 10 minutes. No, it just... So we're going to go ahead and go to number 5. Oh, uh, let's let's do 12. We're going to take things out of order. So, are we all ready? All right. So, it says well, we have to wait till Robert comes back, so <laughs> Okay, then then have no, to we'll, go to five. we'll go to number five. So, discussion of possible action regarding the Nevada Day uh, Committee and all other matters property related thereto. <coughs> oh, yeah. So, we got to wait for everybody else to come back. So, I guess we are still out. No, that's all right. We'll go ahead with number five. Um, well, we need information. From yeah, him. but he may be back by the time we're, okay. we're ready for So, him. all right. Well, I, I needed a clarification because we were kind of confusing last time. I don't remember what all we did. Um, so hard, we can't check the minutes right away to see. Um, 
you were going to handle the local committee mm -hmm. while we did something. Yes. And then we needed a representative to sit on the state committee. Because the state committee is the one that gave us, remember? Uh -huh. the, the, yes, I'm yeah. just okay. trying to remember So right. they are meeting, so you're handling locally. But did we vote on somebody to actually attend? No, I'm not going to make Because you said you didn't really want to, and I said, actually, it's in conjunction. The first committee meeting, they probably only have a couple. But the first one is the night before the NACO meeting in Carson City. So um, Was well, that something that you were interested in no, doing? No, but I thought Judy might Are you be. interested in doing that, sitting on the state level? Um, no, because I don't know how much time I'll have this summer. Well, it's only going to be a couple of meetings, and you come back and talk to Cap. We are. We're on five. Um, okay. Does that sound okay? Um, so this will be before the September meeting. The June. Or ju June. Yeah, the June meeting. Um, Keith, we, we don't have the letter in that we had last month, and I can't remember. Do you remember the date offhand of when? We're on number five, Keith. We, yeah, we oh. went to number Did you five. open it? Yes, I did. Okay. I I'll look and oh, see. I'm, I'm sure I have it written down. It. I'm but, sorry. But they I'm invited us open. to be on the committee and, and attend the state committee meeting for the county. Yes, I'll, I can get those dates. And the reason it got brought back up is... I don't think there's going to be more than a couple because they just wanted it to organize. But um, if, they, if, they, if it's not going to be a ton of meetings going there, I will do it. It's the 27th of June. June. Okay. 6 p.m. All right, myself and Brenda will do that with me. <laughs> <laughs> so the question Brenda Thomas, was, <laughs> yes, I will do that. I will go ahead and sit on the state if nobody else wants to do it. That would be great. Okay. So, in talking with this stuff, I had a little bit more information on this. Am I, is, it, is it broad enough to talk about a little bit more information, or do we just need the person who's going to sit on the state level? That, that was the discussion. Is I. I thought it was decided when Patsy and I had the discussion, and she didn't think it was. So think it's it was. back on for you guys to say who's going to be the representative, and and then we can get together and I can we can go over some things. I, I since uh, I will do the state. Okay. I'll make a motion right. that okay. that um, Commissioner Ancho represent us on the Nevada Day Committee and handle the local um, Nevada, um, a local Lander County. Presentation for whatever we're going to do. For this second. Break. So then, would we have public any public comment? Um, can I put a little bit of information I have now, or do we have to wait until we finish voting for me to just? I have some information that has to do with. No, you can go ahead. Okay, so um, the school has been contacted for the band to see for their participation, which is huge that I really wanted, um, and they are going to have to purchase uniforms, of course, to do this. Um, yes, well, I mean, they want to look professional, and I don't blame them. So they're looking for funds, um, not that we can vote on the funds, I'm just putting this out for information. They um, think their total for the uniforms for all these kids is going to be about 4500 and they think they have about 2000 secured. So at a later time, um, I'll be bringing back more information on that, because if we're going to be represented, we're going to be re represented properly, and I think the uniforms is something that if that's something that we decide to do, that um, if we're going to ask them to help in this, that we look at. So just something that can be on your guys' mind that at a later date I'll bring back. Um, so any other public comment? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right, number 12, we're going to take out of order. Okay, update from Robert Quick, under sheriff regarding the public safety building project, <coughs> sheriff's office, and all other matters properly related thereto. Thanks, Molly. Robert Quick for the sheriff's office. I brought the uh, general contractor from Maddie Construction, Casey uh, Gunther, and he's going to hand you just some photos. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to him to kind of explain where we're at in the project and how things are progressing. Casey Gunther with United Construction for the record. Um, 
So what I have is just progress photos of where we're at right now. It's going back to the concrete demolition and placement and the existing stucco ethos demolition and where we're at now, aside from what you can see. Um, but the ethos, the exterior insulated finish system, so everybody's clear on that. Stucco's progressing actually quite well, aside from the rain we've had. Um, all of the concrete has been replaced already. The, we're doing some repairs and, and some upgrades on the interior with regard to security and stuff like that. Um, right now we're looking, EFA should be completed sometime July time frame. So after that we gotta follow and put lights and cameras back up and do all the reprogramming and stuff like that. Um, we have some boiler upgrades that will be taking place. The boilers are actually supposed to ship tomorrow. So a week on the road, those will be here. Hopefully we can start getting that going the week after next. Um, generator, got a new generator coming for this project. That is supposed to ship on the 17th of June. Again, a week on the road. So we're looking at uh, July for that being up and running and being commissioned as well. Um, overall, everything's been moving pretty smoothly. You know, Robert, I'm sure Quick and I, we speak two, three, four, five times a day coordinating and, and everything seems to be moving really well right now. So the footsteps that were put in, um, the cement in the front door, did you guys have to totally cut that out or were you able to grind it down to get the footprints out? We were able to, to grind it down right now and patch it. Um, just as time goes on, we're going to see how it looks. She should have had her sign her name. <laughs> she was going to put her footprints in there. <laughs> Um, so we, we, we actually have the concrete guys coming back out next week. We're going to take a look at it and examine it and, and, and see if there's something else we can do or if we're just going to replace it outright. Okay, very good. So I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. Last year when this was presented and approved by the prior commissioners, I specifically asked Jim Miller if this would be done by June 30th, and he guaranteed me that it would be done. He also said that there would be regular updates to the commission regarding progress of this. Also, my understanding was um, the initial contract was supposed to start within 30, um, the project was supposed to start within 30 days of signing of the contract, which didn't happen. And uh, without getting into item 13, which does pertain to this, we are going into a new fiscal year. And I guess the disappointment here is that we, we do have to augment things and there was a promise that it would be done by this fiscal year, and it's not going to be. I believe the issue there was that it took five months for us to get a signed contract. So we got the contract back, I believe, uh, November 15th, which we can't do stucco work. We don't want to do demolition work during the wintertime. Um, and at that time, the scope of work was still being developed for the interior, dealing with the, the simplex and stuff like that. So it really, there was no way to, to do that work starting in November. So I'm not exactly sure the timeline of when that, that, that was discussed. I'm not sure what the day of the commission meeting was. Um, we had that discussion with uh, under Sheriff Quick, and I believe we both agreed there was no way to proceed with this work during the winter out the, the winter months. So we started, we had our kickoff meeting March 20th, thinking we'd be out of this. Obviously we're not, but we are shooting to have it done completely by, by August. So that I can attest to. I don't know why it did. The contract got to us late, and by the time we could kick off, it was it was bad time. And Keith, were there other obstacles in their way other than just the signing of the contract? Uh, it's, I, I think that was it, it was just getting everything in place and, and the signing of it. Because this was approved at the budget in, well, final budget, of course, in May, but it was approved during budget and hearings, March, April, and without a contract, ostensibly, well, anywhere. Um, and I guess I'm curious as to why the contract was not presented sooner. That it's a repair job, so there was no specific, well, I'm not aware of the, uh, the engineering aspect of things, but I am disappointed in that. Looking good, really matching this building pretty nicely. Robert, are you satisfied with the work? Um, I am. At this point, um, Casey's on top of the contractors. We've had a few issues. 
but he gets right on top of the con the subcontractors for him. Um, anything I bring to him, he addresses immediately. And we have a weekly uh, official update meeting. Um, however, like he said, we talk repeatedly and we um, call if we have questions and issues or. So we'll move back to number six. six. Update regarding the um, speed limits in Lander County and all other matters properly related there too. So uh, myself, Robert, uh, Under Sheriff Quick, and uh, Bert Ramos, we got together and discussed the, and, and Anna, and we talked about the speed limit issues in town or in the in the community. What we came up with was we put together a complaint form. The complaint form will be given out to the public upon request. They can fill out the request. Uh, Robert and Bert will go look at the area and make determination if we need to uh, look at putting in um, speed sensors or do some kind of a speed study. And once we get past that point, then we can bring it to the commission for, for the commissioners to decide on a direction to go so that the commission or the meetings aren't bombarded continuously with with uh, speed limit issues in the county. So this is for the whole county, so the Southern end also, right? Yeah, they, they absolutely can. They can put in a, 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 a complaint form, and it, it's a form, it's on Lander County uh, letterhead or paper. Fill it out, they submit it, and then it's reviewed. So how are you going to notify the county? Is this going to be... Um, it'll, be it'll be put on our website, once we get to the point, we'll also ask the paper to put it in um, in the newspaper and hopefully get it out word of mouth or, or however else we can get it out. Thank you. For the record, so for the current complaint, we have a, we ordered a speed sensor car counter. It does both, counts cars and at times, I guess, between the tires, so it gets a speed. And then we can get a number of vehicles so if any of these roads we do get complaints on, we can go put this out, come back to you guys with the, with the raw data of what it actually is, how fast they're going, and move forward with it from there. So factual information. Yeah. So factual Bert, information. Um, couple questions is how long do you plan on, you know, if you're monitoring a road, how long would you leave the sensor? I think a couple weeks would probably give us enough, you know, Data to, to move forward, and it should that speed sensor should be in this week sometime. Okay. Um, if it's not sitting in the back right now. So the next question is: Is you know, if you figured out the best location to put one, because you know, putting it by the stop sign isn't going to work. Is you know, what what are your plans with I that? I think the middle of the road probably find somewhere <coughs> that's as closest to dead center as we can, where everybody's already met their probably traveling speed, and kind of common sense move, move forward. You know, so. Nobody feels like we're setting this deck on anybody's favor. Is there, I'm not sure what this, I, I just know the one from the um, Sheriff's Department. Is there a way that first, that that can be removed? So if somebody wants to decide that they want to <laughs> to steal it, is it something that, that's a way to secure it so it's not movable or it's something they don't see or what is, how does that work? No, it's, it's that black hose that runs across the road. Oh, very good. Yeah, um, but I mean, if they want well, to Well, they, they wouldn't know what it was. So no, that, I was just, a, if it was like a, um, a machine like the sheriff's office had, if somebody sees that sitting out in the middle of nowhere, it's, it's going to only be there a short time. So if it's just the one that goes across the road, then that answers my question. Yeah, it's pretty discreet. Yeah, they wouldn't know what it is. So it's, is there any public comment? I just think he should like make it look like a garden hose, <laughs> so everybody wants to run over it. Yeah, we put it inside the garden hose. Yeah. Commissioner, uh -huh. um, <laughs> would it be possible to jump to number eleven? The applicant, um, is, is that any Thomas is here. Um, she took Anna's. time off. Anna's. Yes, absolutely. Anna's. She took a uh, work work time off and requesting that be moved up. All right. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go ahead and. Uh, <coughs> Do number 11. Hello. Hi. I'm, uh, wait. I got to wait. So, discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove a zone change request by Mary Kathleen Farragan, Annis, 
located at 775 North First Street in Battle Mountain, changing APN 002-084-03 from Manufactured Housing Residential Commercial MRC to Single Family Residential R1 and all matters properly related thereto. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kathleen Craig and mm. Annis. Mm. Tyler Bright, Planning Coordinator. Um, just a quick update. It was approved before the Planning Commission at the last planning meeting on May 9th. Um, it was noticed to all the residents within 300 feet of the property lines and in the newspaper, bottom of the newspaper. There is no issues as far as water, sewer, septic, any of that because it is already on municipal uh, system and it's strictly for for bank related reasons so that they can get it transferred into their name. So I do want to add, actually I did talk to um, Ms. Annis, Mrs. Annis' husband Jerry and he did also note that actually I think the house right next door, which was Davis's, had already gone through this process, um, I don't know, within a year or so. And so it's already been done next door. So I will make a motion that we approve the zone change. With the property located at 775 North First Street, APN number 002-084-03 from Manufactured Housing Residential Commercial MRC to finger Single family resident R1. Is there a second? My only question would be to Hyde. Hyde, this, this does not consider spot zoning, is it? You're taking one property within a section and changing the zone on it? There are two issues um, that come up. I will presume that the Planning Commission did exactly what they were supposed to do and they properly approved it. And as far as I know, they didn't put any conditions on it. It was just a blanket approval. So it then comes before the county commission. The way I read our zoning ordinance, you're, I'm kind of setting aside the spot zoning for just a moment, So this is in general. The way I read our zoning ordinance uh, is that uh, you are free to approve or disapprove the essentially what's the resolution of the uh, Planning Commission in uh, making this recommendation to you. But the, the final outcome, assuming you approve it, <coughs> since it's an ordinance, it needs to be changed by ordinance. So I think what you could do today, let's just go on the assumption that, that you're going to approve it change right. if you don't, uh, that you're going to approve it, then that essentially is a direction to the, the district attorney's office to prepare the appropriate ordinance. Now, I haven't been able to get a hold of Mr. Herrera this morning. His opinion may differ from mine, um, but um, that's at least the way I read our zoning ordinance. That's not a problem, except it takes just a little while longer to get it done. The question before the board today, in general, is whether to approve the Planning Commission's recommendation. And the issue of spot zoning uh, is one that has come up before. It's generally in the context of an objection. And the way I understand this, uh, with the um, presentation before the Planning Commission was that there was no objection to the change on this particular parcel. And the okay. um, entire MRC area had come before the Planning Commission several years ago. Right. Um, there was objection to changing uh, the entire area at that point in time, and there were several property owners who were requesting this kind of relief, and I believe that the commission's decision at the time was just not to change anything, just leave the area the way it was. So <clears throat> I'm not surprised to see this kind of situation come up, and I have a lot of sympathy for it. There are several um, very different properties over there that would probably benefit 
from this kind of action and in the absence of a serious objection by an adjoining property owner or even anyone that's in the MRC area, I, I think it would be appropriate for you to consider um, and uh, it's not precluded by spot zone. Okay, thanks, I. So what is actually on this property right now? It's not a mobile home. It's a, is it raw land? Is it a No, no, it's, the, it's the, the Savelle house. Yeah, the old ranch house. The, 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 next to the marble house, it's the, okay. the Savelle house. It was my grandmother's. So going back to the spot zoning for just a second, this is much different than going out of district and developing a community. Oh, this sure. is just making a minor <coughs> change for the residents in a district. Yes. Okay. I think one of the things that stands out for me is, you know, that area is MRC, and you do have a lot of residential homes in that area, but as she stated, you know, this is this is kind of one of the, the original homes in Battle Mountain. You know, next to the Marble House, and you have the Savelle House, and they've always been residential, and they just wanted to get it back to just single-family residential, which I always think is, is great. You know, instead of going with, you know, home business, whatever, is this is a family house, this is part of Battle Mountain's heritage, and... Yeah. I'll second the motion. Any public comment? Yeah, I, I, I've got something. How long will it take you to change the ordinance? Um, essentially, it takes two meetings and a publication, I think. Okay. So, so we can do it fairly quickly. Sure. Okay. Is that something that we can direct the district attorney's office to start working on now? And if Mr. Herrera comes in and disagrees with my opinion, which he certainly has the right We will to do, take care of Mr. Then today would be just fine. You wouldn't have to go any further. Okay. Well, I think as far as that goes, you know, that can come up in a later discussion for a later uh, meeting to be put on the agenda for discussion of changes. But right now, um, is do we want to allow this zone change? Yeah, I, I, I understand that. My One of my questions is there isn't any problem doing this without having the proper ordinance in place. No. Okay. All right, we have a second. All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, very good. Great, thank you. you. All right, so we're going to go back to number four. got a smile on his face. <laughs> okay, Tim Holland with OP Insurance. Um, uh, I was able to, I made six calls and finally got a hold of somebody. Um, the PPO reduced to 17.5%. The HSA, they still have to work with underwriters with. So no movement at all on the HSA. Uh, but the PPO is down to 175 um, the balance is you have about 48 employees on the HSA. They have about 66 on the PPO currently. So um, that would affect more on the PPO side. Um, additional 3% discount if you do what's called a bundle. And that means you put your dental, your vision, and your life with Anthem as well. Um, you can get down to 14%. How do we do that if it's not agendized? It's only agendized for the for the health care and not the life insurance. Well, it does mention health care package. So I guess we could kind of be a little liberal on that. I, well, I don't know. I'm asking, okay. the, I'm asking our attorney. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the specific question now, given okay. the information? They're saying this would be a half, to, this is a package, a bundle, which means group life insurance, which we have with another carrier. And, and dental? Yes. Well, dental might be considered health, but life really isn't. So it's not on the agenda that way. So my question is, could we do something like that off the agenda? So is, the, is that portion of the insurance, the life insurance, um, then covered within... 
<laughs> make sure I understand this correctly. The, the um, basic question is whether or not to go with the Anthem proposal um, with the figures that you've received. That would include making a decision that's not on the agenda. So can I just interject here? Um, and, and however you take this is my argument, but uh, life insurance also includes, you know, if you have loss of limb, you do get a settlement for your life insurance policy. Um, typically, I think most policies include things like that. that accident, death, and dismemberment. Accident, death, and dismemberment. So accident would also part of health. No, the definition of life and health is separate. I'm sorry. You can't well, put them together, Judy. <laughs> so I'm trying we have to go hear what Mr. Forgeron has to say. Yeah. <laughs> The thing I have to say is we don't have prices for anything. I don't need dental vision. Well, that's, that's the other point is what's, what is that compared to what we're paying now? You, you see what I'm saying? So it could kind of change the figure. And you are saying a PPO, so that's a little bit more constricted. On the, You're saying the PPO. The, redu I, I, the reduction in cost right now is on the PPO plan. They have to go back to underwriting for the HSA plan. So we don't know that. It's still 27%. So do we have enough time if this um, was to, if we were to hold off on until the next meeting? No. Just, no. no. This is effective. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just asking. Yeah. No, I, um, you know. We're, we're going to start open enrollment okay. actually next week. So, and plus we need to have our, our budget and we, there's no way. We have to have the budget through the Department of Taxation within the time frame specified by NRS. So we have just numbers floating out there because we don't know what the other cost is. I, I still am in favor of Anthem. May I throw one more thing out there? Okay. Uh, if you do decide to renew it, the, the original plan was to renew with the UAC and then we we're going to do a survey monkey and really look at all the employees and mm -hmm. get out there and see everybody's view. When, when you lock in a, a, a health plan with a carrier for a year, what you're doing is you're agreeing to their pricing for a year. The county could actually opt out at any point in time with a 30-day written notice. So if it was October, we could put in a short-term plan, or we could write an 18-month plan or a 20-month plan. So you don't, I don't want, to, want you to feel like you're locked into a year. They're just saying, Lander County Anthem, you're now agreeing to this pricing for one year. The county can move outside of this term if it came in focus if you decided to. So I, and I had mentioned when at the meeting the round table is the survey monkey, which I think is hugely beneficial because then they need to, everyone, it, it, it's not attached a name, there's nothing, it's just a yeah. survey. So we have across the board, everybody is responsible in this county to go in and comment in that survey. And it's not restricted, I mean, it, it, with the broad questions of the, the problems that they have and down at the bottom they can write, these are my issues, these issues without a name, without a social security number, without anything, so we have a total broad, broad view. Although, I mean, I respect what everyone here is saying, but I want to see across the board information from all the county employees of the insurance so that we can go forward and <coughs> make a legitimate decision. So, so, with that being said. I have a question for Hot. <coughs> the sticking point is the additional money that we would have to pay if we went with Anthem because of the way it's written. So if the board's pleasure is to go with Anthem and we need to uh, have a special meeting to get it done, let's do it. I don't think we have enough time because what special meetings require how much notice? Three days. Three days. And when does the budget have to be in? That's that's tomorrow. What I think it has to be in by, if I remember correctly, and I, I'll go double check right now, but I believe it has to be in by the 28th. Tim, I do have a question for you. If you happen to know this information, do you know what carriers um, the school system and the hospital use? Yes. I'm the broker for the school system. They're self-insured. Okay. And they use CDS as their um, as their TPA, and they use um, 
kind of a prominent St. Mary's overall network called um, DHI. And then the hospital is with Anthem, I believe. Okay, I was just kind of curious about that. I know that we can't join with them because of uh, claim issues, but I was just kind of curious to see what other entities in the county were using. You know, when you, when you, it, it comes up a lot, the school district, the hospital, and the county all coming together, and somebody always subsidizes somebody. And it's generally the ones who are the sickest, have the highest rates, yeah. that want to pool. No, I knew, we, I knew that wasn't really a good idea because we'd had that discussion before, but like I said, I was just kind of curious what, what the other larger employees in the county use. They don't have a plan of which is yours. True. <laughs> so if the pleasure is to go with the Anthony, we can always augment the budget. That's not a problem. We can improve it. And then if we choose to go with a different insurance company, then we just augment the difference. And so you were saying, so let's just say, if we continue with United Healthcare, we did a survey, and the survey came back overwhelming, they dumped this insurance, we could write, we could have a 30-day out, cancel, and we could pick up a different carrier? Yes. We could do that? Yes. And then by then, we'll have the solid numbers for the other? Yes. So is that something that, I mean, that's, because that, but the employees are going to have to know in order to get this, if they want it changed, they're going to have to do these the survey. surveys in order to get this changed, and by then we'll have solid numbers. So you missed part of what Brian just said. Yeah. I think it's good in concept. It's just one of those things that trying to make sure that you know, we've got 106 employees that Tim's listed is you get everybody to participate, and you're not going to get that. Well, the I mean, if they want, if, if, they, to, if, they're, if they want the, I mean, if they want the, the better insurance that they need to participate, but the part of voting on something of the unknown today, if we don't know what these other numbers are, they may put you right back up to 27 percent, <coughs> and we don't know what those numbers are. And I think that if we do, like he said, get the survey out there. If we have that out, then we can change within a certain amount of time. Is that something that's going to be a nightmare for you? To do that, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I, it'll be challenging, to, at, at least, uh, to say the least. So we have to have our budget it has to be signed and postmarked by the county commissioners by May thirty first. No, so, so what one, she's saying is oh. that if we did the thirty day out later, that like we continued with our current carrier, okay, and we did the survey and it came back overwhelming. Hey, we're not happy with it. We want to change. Uh -huh. We take our thirty day out and then we find a new insurance and we sign on. Yeah, well, yeah, we can do it. We, it would just be starting the whole process over. I, I mean, as far as signing up employees, open enrollment. And well, so I forth. mean, if they want uh, better insurance, that shouldn't be a, a problem. I mean, I know it's a pain, but if I mean, we have to have some numbers. We can't go by the unknown. And if they want better insurance, then uh, with the hard data from the survey, that should give us what we need. And we may not. I mean, maybe there will only be 15% that comes back that they don't like the insurance, and then we're not doing anything. And it, it would look at we depending on the increase, the committee would be looking at an augment augment to the budget uh, mm -hmm. for the additional costs. Well, so I'm looking at, at you know Tim talking about the PPO, they would do it'd be a 17 and a half percent increase. Okay, that puts us below the 20 percent we've allowed for budgetary issues. Although the HSA he does not have figures for that, uh, but you've only got 40 40 members of the HSA. And then also, of course, this could be, you know, discussion-wise that we could, could drop another 3% if we bundled. So unless the HSA is totally, you know, over the top, we have the money in the budget that At we don't have to do any the, augmentation. The 20% was a, a place mark is all it was it, it, it to, in the budget. It wasn't. It was not a hard number. It's it, it was a place mark that we might get an increase up to twenty. And I understand that, and that's okay. what I'm saying right. is is we've we've got that place marked in case we did have that increase. And if we do have this, we you know obviously going with Anthem, Anthem would be an increase. But I think I think with the figures that Tim came back with, is we would be okay 
with what we've already got budgeted to submit our final budget. Um, I don't know as so though that would be such an issue. Uh, it, it, I think it is. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think it's uh, never counting on the unknown. I mean, we don't have those numbers. Um, Commissioners, uh, if, if I may. Go ahead. If, if uh, I think Commissioner Sparks has a good idea mm -hmm. to do this. So we don't look at a special meeting next week. I mean, okay. I, I, it doesn't no, matter. No, and I me. think it's a good idea. Can, but, but can we do it as the way the the item is laid out? To you can approve United. We can go down the path of, of looking at issues within the county, and then we can do the thirty eight, or I'm sorry, the uh, thirty day out in the future, and okay. go from there. I mean, I at that point, then we can look at new insurance or or. Uh, Staying with it, we can look at all the options, how the bundle plan works, mm -hmm. and all that. We could sit here and talk until next week. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. Not that's not going to give any answers, solid answers, because it has to go to the underwriter. Yeah. Okay. And we need to make sure that Dennis, the, 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 everybody loves BSG vision, and so you, you move away to, you know, the after model type thing. But um, okay. Cliff, did you have something to say with regards to it, or? Well. We're not saying what you guys should or shouldn't do, but for purposes of HR and accounts payable, if you're going to change, we're saying do it now. Rather because it's going to be a nightmare for us. <coughs> yeah, it is. Lake and Sullivan, for the record, the way we pay our insurance is kind of tricky. And we've had that problem in the past where we you know, waited till the last minute to change, which is doable. But it just we pay a month ahead, so if we take that thirty day out and we've already paid, then we gotta, you know, look at paying who we're paying this month, we're paying this month. I think if you're gonna change just do it now. Change it. So I mean we could continue. We could do the survey and if it's overwhelming then we just catch it next cycle, right? For you mean next year? Yeah, next year. Yeah, that's up to you guys. Oh, or we could do uh, we could do a three month out and plan on it ahead of time. I mean they'll take a ninety day yeah, cancellation too. Cancellation. It's just the minimum yeah, is 30. thirty. So, so I mean, your options are still there. If that but that's still to... creating the issue with with accounts payable and HR. But like Lakin said, yeah. we pay ahead, so it doesn't matter whether it's thirty days, ninety days, whatever. But we're never gonna. I mean, there, I don't know if there's a good way to do any of this midstream like this. I don't know what the right answer is, other than. I try to get them the better. We want to get them the better in insurance. But it will take their participation, and it's, it causes a nightmare for them. Is it doable, though? That's, I mean, you guys are the ones that... Well, I also think you think about, too, why pay, you know, we're, we're already in the middle of a year, which, you know, our deductibles go calendar year, so there's no right answer there. But why continue to pay towards deductibles for United Healthcare if you guys are going to end up switching anyway? To me, you might as well just start with... Valid, valid point. Anthem start paying towards those deductibles. So the other thing about it is, yes, we, we do need to turn in our final budget, and it is a considerable increase, but, um, you know, I, I don't mean this like it's going to sound, is we have, we have spent money on things that are a lot less important than this, and think this is pretty important if we need to pay a little bit extra money um, it's justified I think it's necessary so we have a motion I'll make my motion again Let's see if it dies again to go with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield what do you think the chances of that the HSA will come in lower I know it's a uh, it's not gonna get down to the 17 percent but I, I'm imagining they'll shave some off. I'm gonna, not going to. I'm going to tell them they're s still, you know, in the running, and therefore they'll get a little more aggressive, maybe. But I mean, still traditionally, bigger. Anthem's HSAs, and I will tell you. There how again, I, you said it was based on doing the total package, and we can't. Well, no, you're no, still. No, that was no, additional. No. no, that's additional. That's I, additional savings if we yeah. do. Yeah, that's So additional. I have an Anthem HSA. And I can tell you that I've had it for about seven years, and the HSA model traditionally runs higher than other companies. But the PPO side, 
they don't bounce. It's weird. They don't. They, they really have to blend it because your HSA is considerably more expensive generally than the PPO. Just their contracts are a little bit less rich. And we have a, if we were to do that, you think we're fine as far as getting our finalized budget and everything to the state? Because that's the last thing I want. Because I don't want trouble there. Yeah, we we we, we can do that. That's the the priority is to make sure we don't have issues with taxation. Yeah. Well, exactly. and I think that that you know if we if we decide who to go with today, and if we go with Anthem, is the next meeting we can discuss the bundling to get things a little bit more finalized. No, because it has. Because then Tim, Tim could actually have some hard numbers for us. But approve the budget. We can always, the budget can always be augmented. It's, right. it's, it's work, but it's not impossible. Okay. The direction that the commission goes, we'll make it work. We'll make it work however the commission decides to go. We might have to do a little more work, the staff, but we'll make it work. Right. So. Yeah. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, any public comment? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Aye. Thank you. I didn't have to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Holy smokes. Let's go on to number seven. So, discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove the memorandum of agreement MOA between the United States of America Department of Transportation Federal Aviation Administration and Lander County for the airport sponsors who receive AIP grants and all other matters properly related to. So this is a renewal. Uh, it's a 20-year uh, agreement. Uh, we, we tried to whittle it down a little bit. I believe there's some emails in your backup that shows why the FAA will not budge on it. This is important. This is how we get our, our, uh, this is how we get our uh, grants. FAA grants. It's, it's pretty important to us. Uh, we, as a county, do not necessarily have an out, but the FAA does. And, and Ted and I had many conversations <laughs> about this. And that was right. a conversation I had too because that was the first thing I saw. They have an out, we have no no out. Right, that is correct. Okay. That's the government. Yes. All right. But if you like the FAA grants, it's I would encourage that you approve it. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion we approve the memorandum of agreement between the United States of America, Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, and Lander County for airport sponsors uh, who receive AIP uh, grants. And second. authorize and authorize county the manager. county manager to sign. I'll second. Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, number eight. Discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove a lease uh, for real property between the United States and American Department of Interior um, Bureau of Land Management and Lander County for premises located at the Battle Mountain Airport to operate a full service air tanker base and all other matters properly related thereto. So once again, this is this is a renewal uh, for the airport for the uh, tanker program or the tanker base at the airport. The only recommendation that uh, came from the district attorney's office that it says uh, termination <coughs> will require 60 days written notification to the other party. He would, uh, the DA rec would recommend that we put in there, termination would require 60 days written notification by either party to the other party. That way it gives both sides the out. They increased our landing fees to $100, um, and, and I think everything else pretty much um, stayed the same. Would you clarify for me, because I was a little confused in reading it on the amendments, the evaporation pond and the security <coughs> gate. So yes, so what, what we did last year was we installed the evaporation pond and the security gate at the, uh, at the airport with the agreement that the BLM would reimburse the county, and I believe it's around $254,000 or $55,000. So once this agreement signed and in place, we send this, this agreement back to them with the invoice and will be reimbursed. So these are these are projects that were done on the airport property for BLM that the, the county paid for at the time and then it's in this fiscal year. It wasn't anything that went over years. Yeah, this and years. is our reimbursement. So we will get reimbursed two hundred and fifty 
plus thousand. So with the security gate, though, that doesn't affect any of our ongoings. It, it's just theirs separately. No, right? it does not affect any any access to the general aviation part of it. This is just to the BLM's tanker base. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve a lease for real property between the United States of America, Department of the Interior, Bureau of Land Management, and Lander County for premises located at the Battle Mountain Airport to operate a full-service air tanker base with the recommended changes by the district attorney and authorize the chair to sign. That's authorize the county manager. Or authorize the county manager. I'll second. Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 So real quick, I have a question back on number four. We made that motion, but it was agendized for 27%. Nowhere in my motion was it amended to from the new amount that he had. Yes. Should that have, have been stated? That be my, that's my only question. Um, or was it gosh, record enough it. that? Sure. Good I'm going to have to consult with okay. the council. <laughs> I'm not sure. Based on the, the uh, wording of the, the uh, agenda item, I think it contemplates up to a maximum of a 27% increase, okay, so which is, uh, in general, I think what your motion approved, that is subject to being reduced. Couldn't increase it, but you could reduce it. Okay. Yeah, I was. my motion was based on the 17% yes. is what he stated, correct? That he got it down to mm -hmm. on the PPO mm -hmm. and yes. the HSA. So was, yes. Could be reduced from the 27%. Okay, mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure it was clear. Okay. Transparent here, so. And then, did we have a second on number eight? Um, we voted. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, we voted. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell. I will. I'm sorry. I, I didn't so hear Brian just, say I because he started. Oh, uh, okay. So I. Okay. I. Said, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped right in the middle. <laughs> Confused me. All right. So number nine, discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove the amended um, interlocal, uh, interlocal. <clears throat> contract for services between Department of Health and Human Services, Aging and Disability Services Division, and the Lander County for ongoing services um, to children with intellectual and development dis um, disabilities and all other matters property related there. <coughs> so this is just a renewal. There's no increases in this. It's our, our uh, biannual, biannual renewal through the state for these services. I have questions. Yes. <laughs> so I'd like to know what, um, in the past years, uh, have they been doing any services for us? Yeah. And, uh, well, no, I know. I would, uh, uh, are they, other than the Division of Aging for, like, the um, uh, DCFS, are they doing things that have to do with the Division of Child and Family Services, or is this is that ent entirely different? I, I believe they do work. Oh, it is it, right. oh, it's entirely different. Fine, okay, fine. very good. All right. So, there a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the amended interlocal intralocal contract for services between the Department of Health and Human Services, Aging and Disability Services Division, and Lander County for ongoing services to children with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and authorize. Chair. The chair to sign. Thank you, Patsy. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Number 10. Discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove a service agreement between RHP Mechanical Systems and Lander County for maintenance and service for the Lander County. Um, Courthouse and administrative building and all other matters properly related thereto. Anna Fanol at the building department. Is Hi, Anna. Is this a renewal know? with the same company or a different company? Different this company. is new, isn't it? Mm -hmm. they, 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 do, they have a contract with the rec center and they have a contract with the school and it's going to be a better contract. Um, it also said if there's any other additional equipment we wanted to add, did you look into that? See, um, yes, but I'm fine. Leave it the way it is. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And what is the effective date on it? July 1st. July? Mm -hmm. Can I make a 
motion to approve a service agreement between RHP Mechanical Systems and Lander County for maintenance and service for the Lander County Courthouse and admi Administration Building, effective Ju July 1st, 2019. And authorize Cheers. the chair to sign. I'll second the motion. Any public comment? Just that we have to fill in um, the agreement shall begin on blank. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you, Anna. All right. So, skip over the ones we've already done. Discussion of possible action for a change order um, to incorporate the FY 2019-2020 fire panel replacement project budgeted monies for the Sheriff's Office into ongoing Sheriff's Office building stucco and repair project and to utilize any additional funds from the project's contingency to fund the project and all other matters properly related thereto. That's a mouthful. <laughs> yes. uh, Robert Quick for the Sheriff's Office. So, a little little history on this. So, we budgeted for a fire panel replacement for the next fiscal year. <coughs> that is because of the issues we've had with our fire panel and the current vendor of that fire panel, who's uh, um, the only one that can do anything with it um, in the state. And um, we have ongoing or have had ongoing issues with some sort of a short in the system. And that's a result of the wiring, as we can figure it, is uh, in a series. It's, uh, the wires don't run to each device, each smoke detector. Or, um, so it's somewhere in the building. The, um, when I got the um, initial um, pricing numbers for the budget, the, the three companies that I spoke to said we, they may or may not have to replace wiring. They didn't know. And if they had to replace wiring, the, the pricing that they gave would be considerably higher because of the labor costs. Um, the more I tried to narrow them down, so we did the budget. The more I tried to narrow them down, the more it came clear that they weren't going to warranty the system if they don't replace the wires because they can't without having the same problem. So I approached our current uh, United Construction contractor and actually the uh, electrician that's working on the, the bid or the building now about the possibility of adding the fire panel and having them sub out to, uh, to replace the fire panel uh, with the wiring. So they went out and got a sub for themselves the through the electrician that we're currently using and they came back with this with a pricing which is a, a little bit higher than what we were budgeted for for next fiscal year. So what I want to do is be able to take um, July 1st and when the budget kicks in is take that 50000 that we already budgeted for, bring it into this current project and then um, have them replace the panel, and and which the, will include all the wiring. What was the, what was the estimated cost? Um, it is, and I'm waiting for an answer on the, the exact amount. It's an additional, uh, about an additional $13,000 that would come out of contingency. So in addition to the, the 50, 50, so 63000 It's about 63000 That doesn't have to be bid? The 63, um, I spoke to um, Ted the last time, and because, my understanding was, because it's a current contractor and they're subbing under the electrician, and the money comes in as a con from the contingency which is already budgeted that it should not be, but that would be a question for Hawk. <laughs> and the, the key to that is because <coughs> you have a current general contractor. And so, so I essence, think, uh, the undersheriff is correct. In essence, though, the, it's, you, you requested the 50000 so that will be effective July 1st. Correct. So the 13000 could be considered as a change order, and there is money in the existing budget on the original maintenance budget because it was three million twenty thousand. They came in at three million six, so we we have fourteen thousand left over from that. It just needs to be, along with whatever's left, transferred into the twenty, the two thousand nineteen twenty budget. <coughs> Correct. That, it would yeah. be it would be yeah. a change so order it's, it's, to have that amount, and then July first, I could use that this project money. Uh, so you really, in essence, aren't asking for any additional money. 
No, we absolutely just need, not. Yeah, we just need to approve. You know, I'm just basically asking you rolling. use this money from this project in this project. Right. Right. For July 1st. So with the vendor, the ones that are going to there now, are we going to have later down the road if we have issues with the system like we're having now, are we going to be able to have those issues fixed? Uh, my understanding with the vendor that they're selecting is, is there are several companies that can do the inspections and services on those as opposed to the only one we have okay. at the present. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the change order to incorporate the fiscal year 2019-2020 fire panel replacement project for the sheriff's office into the ongoing sheriff's office building stucco and repair project. Comment. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. So, discussion and possible action to relocate existing budgeted money under. Reallocate. Or reallocate, I'm sorry. Reallocate, reallocate I'm sorry. <laughs> existing budgeted money under 029-000-54010 FA-24 in the amount of $20,000 for the purchase of a MFP copier for the Sheriff's Office and all other matters properly related there too. So this is the main multifunction printer copier that we have in the administrative section of the Sheriff's Office. Um, <coughs> what we have there was graciously purchased long ago by um, the Tech Fund Laura and Laura Duvall and we use it a lot. Um, this particular money is already budgeted in another project that we're not using and what we're looking to do because we are doing so much scanning of our old files to archive them at the system um, we're starting to have some issues with this particular device so what we're looking to do is take some of this uh, unused money that's already in this year's budget purchase a replacement and continue to use the current one we have until we can't use it anymore to do the scanning I thought we already did a copier for you. Um, I know we talked about it, but there's a, this the, is the only one? No, no. There's We have a, a copy machine budgeted in next year's budget for the uh, detention facility, which is, would oh. be as much smaller okay. unit. And my actual intent would to take this one and move it in there so I wouldn't have to use that money. I, I remember we approved the copier, right. and that's why, and that was big bucks, so I thought, okay, thank you. So you mean to say that there was actually a line item of money that you don't use that I didn't touch? It, this particular line item is actually for the um, contingency for the inmate phone system, which we did roll some of it over, um, but we are not using it because the, the devices that we're waiting on are still not ready to go. And so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion that we reallocate Existing budget monies under 029-000-54010-FA-24 in the amount of 20000 for the Sheriff's Office <coughs> for the purchase of an MFP copier. Second. Public comment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Very good. All right. So finance. Discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove the resolution to 2019-5 to set the tax rate for the University of Nevada Cooperative Extension, Ag Extension, and all other matters properly related thereto. And there's no change on this one. It's exactly the same as last year. Yes, and it has to be done annually. I'll make a motion to approve the... Oh, I'm going to read it. Make a motion to approve resolution number 2019-05 of the Board of Land and County Commissioners, a re resolution setting the fiscal year 2019-2020 tax rate for the Cooperative Extension Agricultural Extension. Whereas, Lander County Board of Commissioners used a tax rate of 0 0.0150 per $100 of an assessed value in calculating estimated revenue to be apportioned to the Cooperative Extension Fund for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. And whereas Nevada Revised Statute 549.020, subsection 2, requires the Lander County Board of Commissioners to pass a resolution annually if the rate is greater than 
than zero point one per one hundred dollars assessed value. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Lander County Board of Commissioners hereby approve the rate of zero point zero one five zero per one hundred dollars of assessed value, excluding the net proceeds of mines for the use in the Cooperative Extension Agricultural Extension Fund for the 2019-2020 fiscal year, passed and adopted this 23rd day of May, 2019. And authorize the chair to sign. I second the motion. Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 So, discussion and possible action, approve, disapprove the Lander County final budget for the FY 1920 and the submission to the Department of Taxation and all other matters properly related thereto. So, we have no changes in the budget from our, our last meeting, unless, and we hope you don't have, mm -hmm. have any changes. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Kim Holland, healthcare. Oh, right, and we'll be we'll work with that. Keith, I didn't see, did I miss it? Um, we talked about the ARC. Yeah, I, uh, I'm looking at uh, an FAA grant for that, so I thank you for approving that FAA contract, to, to uh, see if they'll pay for a portion of that. Half is what we're looking at. So if they pay half, we're fine? Yes. And what if, we don't pay, if, what if they don't pay half? Well, then we'll have to look at the following year or augmenting the budget because it's a $750,000 piece of equipment. Okay. And you, the commission did approve the $350,000 commission. I, I guess the biggest surprise was the, um, the amount of money that uh, is going up because of the part-time <coughs> folks that we're bringing to the... Um, here with the full-time uh, wages. <laughs> and that was, um, let's see. And about 300 and... Well, the swimming pool alone went up $228,000. That's what a lot of people are talking about, right? And that was a lot of them right yes. there, I'm, I'm yes. assuming. That's correct. Yeah. Wow. But I think their wages have been out of whack for um, their pay scale was not done correctly to begin with, so to speak. So I think unfortunately it had, when it, it was caught, it was all, it has to be absorbed all at one time because. So I will make a motion to approve the Lander County final budget for fiscal year 2019 2020 and the submission to the Department of Taxation. All second. Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Nay? Nay. Nay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Opposed? Sorry. We authorize the chair to sign. No, actually, uh, oh, everybody all five signed. Of you have to sign. Well, okay. I guess. Yeah, you I don't have to sign. Nay. There's no. Place the sign for their name. <coughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, let's go ahead and sign. There's three copies. There's three uh, budgets there to sign. I think the resolutions are the only ones that need to have a signature line for name. So I don't think any. Remove the signatures here.
update and, um, from the Public Works Director and all other um, properly related thereto. Bert? Bert? Programmers for the record, sorry about yes. that. Um, so I wanted to give a quick little update. Uh, got slowed down on some of our projects with the rain. I'm sure you guys have had some complaints. We had some hilltop roads really go south on us with uh, the mud. We freshly bladed them and then the rain hit and kind of took them out, but we're getting them fixed up. But the main reason I wanted to give an update is because it, um, Commissioner Allen had made a comment at the last meeting and I didn't have enough facts to, to address it with um, our wells out in the valley and the costs that we went through. <clears throat> so at the pa in the past when, when Jake was here and Shaw and they came and they did the wells out there, they came to the commission with you know possibly 15 to 20 million dollars for an arsenic treatment plant. And them numbers are correct because the arsenic treatment plant I'm referring to is only going to treat about 300 gallons. We can double it by mixing and make 600 gallons. And I'll, I'll get to where I'm going with this then, but um, <clears throat> so it's how much, how much water they could, could treat. Doubles your numbers in price. But I went back and I went through all of our wells and um, for example, well three was drilled in 1969, it's 50 years old. Well six was drilled in 83, um, it's 36 years old. Well four in 76, it's 43 years old. And then well one here in Battle Mountain um, was in 35 and I couldn't find any record of when it was plugged or what it was putting out. And well two was drilled in 58 and was plugged in 2006. And, and the reason that I think that this, these things all matter is because that's 61 years of, of service life and they go off a lot of different things now with stainless steel casing they're putting in the ground like we put out here at the golf course. They haven't really put found a life expectancy because it's going for so much longer. That stuff just, the, the ground doesn't deteriorate it. You don't have well casing failures and there's a bunch of factors that come in on how much drawdown, how much weight you're putting on the exterior of the pipe that go with all this. Um, but we went from well three and four, we pumped 50 million gallons out of them in the last nine months. And, that, and that's for standpipe water for water trucks, and that's for our parks and the ball fields and, and that over here to save it, saving our wells out in the valley. And I know hopefully Lakin's gone, um, because for the budget, it's something that we might consider strongly revisiting on putting in a small arsenic treatment plant at well six. And the reason is, is out here in the valley, we're, uh, well nine produces about 57 million gallons of our water a year. That, that's what we're getting out of it. Um, eight and, um, seven and eight produce, produce about 21 million gallons. And our, during peak, our monthly average, the community is using about 45 million gallons. So that leaves us with a shortfall. You know, we start falling 30 million gallons short if we hit the full peak. Now, that's, them numbers aren't going to be fully true when we take the golf course off the system. But it goes to show how crucial Well 9 out here in this valley is for the community. It's, it's the only thing that keeps, keeps us going. So we, we might want to start thinking about putting in something here on some of these wells that we might have 50 or 60 years left of life in the community and, and the reason that I kind of stress that is for one we're in a different water basin and we'll be able to use they won't let us transfer water from one basin to the other we everybody's familiar with that um, so we can utilize some of our water rights and we also already have the infrastructure in place we'd have to put a building up and and this small little little treatment and we can get the most bang for our buck moving forward so I I mainly wanted to address that and make sure that, you know, that the community doesn't feel like that they, or the past commissioner or anybody feel like they were misled with the wells out in the valley because the numbers that were given to them were correct at the time. They just, nobody knew what they were going to produce. Had them all been big producers, everybody would still be happy. Um, the other thing that we need to look at is a gentleman here in town has a two-story house and at two in the morning he usually gets up and uses the restroom. And on the upper floor, he said his toilet barely has enough water pressure to fill the toilet at 2 in the morning. But it, the rest of the day, it's not a problem. And, and a lot of that is because of the golf course watering, and we don't have well six running. 
So it's important to get something on the other side of this overpass running just to keep the pressure up so the, so the drawdown isn't so much when, when we pull big, big water off of this main line coming into town. Um, if I'd had all this information and looked into it this deep prior to the budget, I'd have been sitting before you guys with, with this in the budget. I didn't, and I've been trying to get here as fast as I could, but it just didn't work out. So, Bert, I just want to clarify something. Um, I was not arguing with you regarding that. Um, I actually do have the report from Shaw Engineering before the wells were drilled, um, prior to when it was, was brought before a previous commission. And the arsenic treatment plant itself was would have been cheaper than the wells. Um, one of their justifications at that time was that maintenance of the of the well or of the arsenic treatment itself, um, arsenic treatment plant itself would add additional cost. And and you can always go, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Is drilling the well south of town um, far exceeded what was originally proposed to the commission, and and also the fact of the matter that they just aren't producing as much as as we need. Um, you know, it's back again to hindsight's 2020. And had they put in the arsenic treatment plant at that time, we would have been money ahead. I'm not arguing that we don't need one. It's just too bad that that money previously has is gone. Um, no, no, I, and I didn't mean to come off as anything argumentative at all. I just didn't have enough backup at the time to no, I to present that. a case for, for the community to understand why we ended up where we are, and I didn't right. want anybody to feel like they've been misled by. By and my I do understand that. I do understand that, and and the thing is, is we do have to look at, you know, if we have to solely depend on those wells south of, south of town, is there is a possibility that we could actually <coughs> run into a water shortage. So, you know, looking forward, we need options. <clears throat> Monday. Let's get together and schedule a time so that I can get with you and go out to Crescent Valley to see that facility. Missed it this week. I was busy. No, no worries. You bet. Um, Monday, I have to meet with NDOT and go between here and Austin. We're looking at um, cattle guards with them on their right-of-way fences. Okay. And that'll be back in front of you guys later. But Isn't yeah. Monday I'll, a holiday? I'll give you a call. Yeah, I oh, think yeah. so. We'll Memorial, Day. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow's your trees, Patsy. Mm. So any public comment? All right. Thanks, Bert. Thank you. So correspondence reports potential upcoming agenda items. I'm sorry. Seeing as well, for director, may I touch um, or have a comment on number three to give you an update real quick on our directory board for livestock? And then which one? I'm sorry. Item number three. Three. Sure. <coughs> number three. Livestock. Livestock. Oh, okay. Are you okay with that? Uh -huh. so you open, open that back up. Okay, so I'm going to open up item number three. Okay, Sadie Sullivan for the record. Um, just to give you heads up, March 8th of 2018, um, the board had appointed Lisa Clark, Clayton Schroeder, and Adam McKinney, um, but it was only to fulfill till June 30th of 2018. Um, so we did have their letter of interest that was in our minutes but we do not have a board as of July of 2018 to print. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. And um, Keith and I, I will get a publication out there for all boards, and I'll touch base with you on that one. We have an advertisement, and we have them in there as well as Austin. So okay. just give you a heads up. We don't have a current board okay, because of how the motion was. All right. Okay, thank thank you. you. Thank you. And Commissioner, Keith. could you reopen? <coughs> Keep, make sure that the community is alerted about the insect abatement problems that we're going to face when this storm's over. Okay, I will do that. Do you want one? Do you want to reopen number four? Number four? Please. Uh, Tim Holland has some additional information. Okay, so we're going to open number four back up. Uh, Tim Holland, OP Insurance. Um, we'll continue working on this, but right now the PPO is negotiated down to 12.5%. 12.5. 12.5, and the HSA down to 21 percent, and that's before the bundle discount. So we could get, you know, below 10 on the PPO. Um, so yes, we'll continue to work on this, but okay. we're within the 20. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
right. Good job, right. thank you. Tim, keep us. beating them up. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're on, too uh, <laughs> on the agenda <laughs> items. Okay. Yeah, we since we're meeting in Austin, we have a couple things that we're doing on in Austin, the youth center and yes. their um so I radio, have, the radio I've, grounds. I have the and youth. summit engineering. Anything else specifically for Austin? No, but I do. I've been talking to Keith on a couple things. One of them is the uh, North First, North Second truck route. Yep, I've had a discussion with Bert about it. Okay. Um, we, we still need to do a little more research. Okay. Um, when Ted gets back, I know it came up a couple of years back. Yeah. And I just don't remember the outcome. Yeah, that and then also uh, looking at some of our building code. Yes. Especially uh, accessory buildings and what that constitutes and so Keith yes um, the packets on the American Lands Council you want to have that in Austin or would you like to have that in Battle Mountain at the 28th or 23rd I'm sorry. well June 27th will be the next Battle Mountain meeting I guess it really doesn't matter um, and it, whatever you think, if it's something that, I mean, it, it applies to all of the county, and Austin does have a lot of, of public property, too. So it's up to you. Yeah, I do want to, this is not something for an immediate um, agenda item. I just want to bring it to your attention before um, so I don't remember so you can write it down and you can forget okay. is um, upon completion of the sheriff's office uh, definitely do a punch list a follow through um, we do also will have a it should have a year of uh, warranty on that to make sure that those things are followed up with because I know past projects they have not been and I want to make sure that everything is, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed on that. Okay. All, right. <coughs> all right, so public comment for non-gendized items only. Persons are invited to submit <coughs> comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any non-gendized items at the board meeting, if any. Any discussions of those comments at the discretion of the board? All public comments may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Um, reasonable restrictions may be placed on the public comments based upon time, <coughs> manner, and the public comment based upon viewpoints uh, may not be restricted. So adjourn. We have adjourned. No. no. Do we have Don't any public comments? Oh, so so I thought I asked for public comment. Sorry, public comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are adjourned. A motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. I made a motion. Nancy, <laughs> so aye. 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 Bye, Austin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now for my, my favor. No. You can go for what's your favor. My big, 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 big favor to ask you, and I missed it last, this last one. On the 11th is Lexi.